Facebook or YouTube. But I'm assuming we're on. Uh, yes. I just can't see us. We Which, got uh, 94 watching now. That's good. And the number keeps growing. How's my uh, subscriptions over at uh, YouTube, Willie? Seventy nine. Well, I got seventy nine point seven. So seventy nine point seven. But that's uh, that's from a slow person. Yes, I'm not on the back end. I'm just looking from my. You're never on the back end, are you, kid? No. Uh, Vince Russo today at ten thirty, uh, as we are live on Facebook and YouTube right now for the after show, as we do every day, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and then on Fridays it'll be the Anna Hummel show. Uh, Lummy, when's the next time you're going to do a, a sports? I was going to do one today, uh, Wednesdays. Oh, fantastic! Okay. That's be, that'll be that'll be great. Thank you, my friend. No problem. Trying to make it, a, you know, obviously every Wednesday regular thing. Right. Babyface um, can be here. Oh, today you can. Yes. That's that's good. Yeah. So that's he good. Brings a lot of stuff. Uh, Razor tomorrow. No, tonight. Friday will be hectic. Because it's going to be. It sounds like it's going to be an absolute jam packed. Uh, Bubba 199 with, oh. an, with a trick knee Ashley kicker. Yeah, I counted uh, 20. If Dan, Dr. Dan and R show up, 22. Really? Yeah. That might be the most we've ever had since uh, a Bubba 199 nonetheless. I would have to agree. We usually don't have that many, but most of those guys stay outside. Yeah. The Nashes will have. We need to get those. We, 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 one, we, gotta, we have to move that stage today. Like, we got to yes. do that. I, and I need you and Rhett. To maybe help because me and the merch crick tried and I got it about a quarter away up. Yeah, and and, uh, and if I if I would have had just one lummy horsepower, one lummy, yeah, me, I could have got it. Me and Red were gonna do it, and then I was gonna have maybe if Macho Man. It's three, it. three. It's a three dude deal. Yeah, it, it's a three. It's an easy three dude you could, deal. You could probably get Macho to superset the whole thing by himself. No, Macho's got a blown out shoulder right now. Oh no. Yeah, he Mach looks good, but he's 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 kind of he's kind of tweaked right now. Yeah, I got some problems under the hood. He does. His he's he's got a blown cylinder right now. Needs some new spark plugs. He's got a he's got a blown coil pack. Oh, coil pack. If if you got a if you got a Ford and you got a you, like your whole car can be running real good, but it, it feels like you got like a like a like a shaky transmission or something because one coil pack, each individual cylinder has its own coil pack, and you can I have one bad coil pack which you know makes it only run on seven cylinders and it just it if it, it it feels like either a you got a wobbly tire or a, a or a fucked up transmission when really it's just a coil pack yeah it's a it's a problem with those cherokees i, I like those uh those late 90 cherokees and that's a pretty constant issue with them but they like switch is that what over. you're running uh what are you running right now just a 2000 frontier i mean yeah <laughs> really I, it, yeah same jobber truck got towed Hey, I mean, it's it's a good little truck. It's ugly. It paid Don't get me wrong. It, yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. that's, that's bought it. Bought it in on. Orlando. It had uh, like paid 70, for. 78 thousand miles on it when right. I found it. As long as you keep the oil changed in that thing, it's a Nissan, right? Sure is. As long as you keep the oil changed in that thing, how many miles you got on it right now? Mm, like one oh eight. Oh, that motherfucker will run forever. And you, that's that's the car that I like. You know what I mean? I'm okay with driving around something that looks a little shitty as long as I know it's going to last. 300 plus because <clears throat> i like riding things till the wheels fall off yeah well I, I took my f my 2019 f uh f-150 lariat and i put it underneath the car cover here at the studios and let me you i never drive it no not at all because i'm trying to keep the miles low on it so um i, I might sell it oh, i don't got it i mean i got let me all you ever see me drive is the crown vic or the uh, smart car oh yeah and you only got a couple parking spots at the apartment so that thing's under cover here and yeah most of my cars are here my shitty cars <laughs> most of my shitty cars are here yeah see the crown vic or the smart car i'm taking i'm gonna take tyler's race car back out to uh and store i'm gonna store it somewhere else oh that that car cover i had on it let me it just yeah. it's not florida you know listen you can have a car cover and it might be a great car cover for indiana but fucking Florida, Florida will kill it. Just deteriorates. It just and the sun. People have no idea, man. Sun, pollen, pollen rain soaks it all in there. Fucking pollen will kill you. Vince Russo, uh, probably any minute now. I got the Macho Man, Mini Mach, standing by uh, to accept his invitation. Yeah, we kind of when when we last time we talked to me and uh, Vince Russo, it was ten thirty. So. Yeah, yeah, he's he'll probably be on. very punctual. He, I'm sure he is unbelievably punctual. Uh, and um, 
He'll be calling here any minute, and we're gonna get we're gonna kind of break this down. We were going through some of my archives and f- and found this, and I'm gonna tell Vince. I'm gonna, Vince, I got some great shit of Hogan being very very um, uncensored and maybe somewhat reckless on some stuff. Yeah, get, get a couple Miller lights in him, and get a couple Miller lights and a couple Perkies in him, and 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 let it rip. Uh, Vince. Brother. Brother, <clears throat> Vince has his own. Vince Russo has his own show. Is it on? Is he on Twitch, Patreon, He's YouTube? A Patreon, and then he has a, also a YouTube channel. YouTube and Patreon. Was he Twitch for a while, and then he realized Twitch is a bunch of you know like I. I don't I, know I, if he was ever on Twitch. I know he's been in the podcast game for a little while. Right. <clears throat> I think. I think we're getting ready to. Get, I think we're getting ready to yeah you know, sync up with him right now. All right. Look at that. Nice and punctual. Ten thirty. Well, yeah, Vince is a, Vince is a TV guy, so they're always real punctual. He's a pro. Yeah, he is a pro. V- Vince, you there? Yes. What's going on, Bubba? Good. Are you in Colorado nowadays? Yes, I am. Yes. How close to uh, Boulder? Oh God, bro! I, I I go to Boulder weekly, maybe twenty minutes. Vince, listen. Being a radio, you know, listen. I know radio better than you do, and you know wrestling better than I do. Why do you talk so far from the microphone? You want me to bring it? Well, because I, I tend to get loud, man. Well, then and that's it, when you ride the levels down a little bit. Don't look like a jobber. You literally look like a fucking jobber. I know, bro. But That'd be so like me I'm, going out there to the ring, and I have my wristbands and all my shit, and you'd be like, you, you fucking stop me at the gorilla position and say, Bubba, fucking back it down a notch, buddy. Come on. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> bro, I tend to get loud. I'm Italian. I get excited. Yeah, I know, and but goddamn, you. I and mean, this and that. I mean, it's like fuck. It's not even believable that you're on the air. You got to make it. I mean, it's, it's, you got to you got to get up on that mic and work it, buddy. Is that better? Is that cool? Let better? me see here. I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm really not trying to fuck with you. I'm just trying to make you look like a real. No, broad- no, bro. You, you're a pro, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make like, like a broadcaster. <laughs> it's like when Jeremy Borash took me be out in the back and said, "Man, you got this all wrong. This backstage reporting. You don't know what the fuck you're doing, Bob." And I was like, "I know." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I appreciate it, bro. As long as I don't, uh, I, I just don't want to blow your e- drums off. You no, know? just ride, just ride your levels a little bit and get up on that mic. You already got a windscreen, so that windscreen's made so you don't pop your peas, which means yeah. you and you don't, you only pop your peas if you're riding your mic close, and you know, so the closer you are to the mic, and you also need like a little Vince Russo. Uh, like whatever your logo is, as like square see, gimmick. See, yeah, square see, I got the square gimmick, gimmick right there. Yeah, we, we need to get you one. See, I feel like I, f- I feel like we're at fucking I'm John I'm Bubba Roz Rods, and we're at <laughs> and we're at Gleason's, and I'm trying to fucking show you the ropes. You're hitting the ropes the first time, and you're keeping hey. your elbow and you're keeping your elbow down. I'm like, you're gonna you gotta bruise your ribs in order to hit the ropes right. And I'm loving it, bro. I'm loving it. I'm I'm loving. You're the pro, man. Now, you are the pro. This is the, I was just talking about. You know, like. It, if I went as a writer, if I went to a Stephen King seminar, this is like a Bubba the Love Spun seminar. It's awesome, bro. You know where we fucked up, man, is and I know you were writing back then, and I know I'm not I mean I'm not a wrestler, but we should have come back with an awesome Kong fucking Bubba the Love Sponge match. And she and listen, and she just kicks the fucking shit out of me. <laughs> like we come back like three three Mondays in a row where she just fucking kills me but she never gets it clean it's always kind of some kind of fuck job where and where where she 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 wins but i always get fucked then we come back with the pay-per-view and i win but but it was a fuck job she gets fucked <clears throat> and then at the end of the day i gotta end up doing one clean in the middle for her now she would she would have gone for that uh, hold on for a minute <laughs> Did you really want to take a chance of Awesome Kong shooting on you in a wrestling? I was there when she was shooting on you, bro, and it was ugly. No, ugly. hold on. <laughs> now, see, that's the biggest fucked up bunch of bullshit ever. It was me, you, and Scott Hall. And and I think in that hallway. And yes. I just covered up because I knew uh, yes. I, cu- I couldn't hit a girl. Like, I knew yes. I, would, I would be over. And I've said that. I've I've said that, bro, from day one. I've always told that story that yes, you know, Bubba covered up, uh, you know, did did not strike, was not aggressive, was one hundred percent trying to uh, protect himself. I've said that from day one. And me and Scott Hall were just got we just got done getting fucked up, and we were wa- walking back from catering. And it was that real, real fucking dark ass hallway. And I remember Scott Hall saying. 
brother, this wasn't on the pre-tape sheet. This is a shoot. And I'm like, what the fuck's <laughs> going on? What the fuck? I got this bitch attacking me over some shit I said on the radio. And all I really said, and it, and it probably wasn't cool, but all I said was, you know, screw Haiti until we got, uh, you know, have have taken care of our own people, like people in Detroit are not homeless and people in Chicago aren't killing each other. You know, let's worry about our... Remember when when Haiti, they were having like these Haiti relief funds and Bruce Springsteen yeah. was yeah. Ra- raising like $10 million and next thing you know, the, the fucking Prince of Haiti was taking like eight of it. Nobody in Haiti was really getting any relief. Well, yeah. fuck, but if, so, yes, I mean, if... Listen, I worked, I worked, you know, Texas Hangman, and I did some some dark match shit. You know, I was trained by Tom. Remember Tom Stone? I'm not familiar with him. No, uh-uh. <laughs> Tom. What Tom Stone uh, had a had a training facility, and he was an old. He was out of Milwaukee, and like, uh, and so he would take. Remember back in the day when they would get regional jobbers to come in and pay him like yeah. five hundred bucks. Yeah. So he would train all these guys in in M- Milwaukee and then run them up to Vern's and they would do, you know, they would do each guy would get like 300 bucks, you know, to do a job for Vern and then Vince would call him up and he'd run him down to Fort Wayne or whatever. So he had like these these five or six guys that were just straight jobbers and he could make a living at it. Well, I was in Milwaukee doing radio and my buddy Texas Hangman, Mike Moran, who had a kind of a, a Texas Hangman had a little bit of a run, didn't he? And in, in, uh, uh, some, in some territories, I think. Did you ever write? Did you ever write for Texas Hangman, Vince? No, I, I, I'm, I'm not. I, I don't know who he is. I've never, he, uh, I've um, never heard. Of him, no. He, he, he worked a little bit of WCW early on, uh, and then uh, just was, just was a hand, just was a, you know, a hand putting people over, and um, so. I went. I went to the school, and so I. It was in 1992, and I was in radio, and I was this big sling and dick on Afternoon Drive, and so Tom Stone was this motherfucking guy who owned the spot, <laughs> like, and he was just a real flim flam and shit, and so he's like, "Hey, we can take this loudmouth radio guy, teach him four or five moves." And we can pack high schools because he has his own show and it seems like he can say anything he wants. So he can just promote the shit out of these shows and we'll put him over in the main. And I was just wrestling like a big guy. Like literally, you know, the show of strength. Like I'd lock up, then we'd go right to the show of strength. And then we'd do like a chest bump, then hit the ropes, duck the fucking clothesline, watch the boot. Then, uh, you know, fucking the the other guy gets a little heat, chokes me out, fucking, you know, uh, Steps on my fucking face, and then uh, I hulk up, come back, fucking throw him, and then go off. I can only go off the second rope. The so- we call it the Bubba Sofa, sp- <laughs> Bubba Sofa Splash. And we would tear the fucking house down. We'd pack, oh, I believe it, we'd man. Pa- we'd pack like two or 3000 in there. We'd make like a $1,500 donation to the football team, and Tom Stone yeah. would put like eight grand in his pocket because he, he got <laughs> free advertising, and then all the boys would get a payday. And so— yeah. So when I got to Tampa, then um, uh, they, 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 somebody figured out that I had a little bit of experience, just like just a, a tad. And um, they would have Vince and WCW would have me open up at house shows as a dark match because they had all this. Because for three weeks on my on my radio show, I'd be like, yeah. that's right, man. You got to be at the Sun Dome because I'm going to be fucking pro wrestling. I'm the man. And they would yeah. get all this built in free promotion. So yep. at one time, I forget what year it was. I was the only guy in the history of wrestling that wrestled for WCW, WWF, and the AWF. Remember the AWF? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wrestled yeah. I wrestled yeah. all three federations in one year as a, as a dark match. Bro, you know what's funny about that? I'll, I'll never forget this, bro. Uh, and, and I want you to know, like, I, you know, I have not seen or spoken to you in a long time, but I have, I have said this for years. Now, bro, when you came into TNA um, – you know, the, the, there was some heat. Oh, there was because, a lot of heat because it was a straight shove down. It was Hogan saying, this is my yes. friend, and it's yes. the way the fuck it's going to be. Yes, yeah. but I got to tell you something, Bubba. Yes, there was a lot of heat, and it wasn't just that, bro. He was bringing in a lot of his Oh, he friends. brought in knobs. Yeah, he brought yeah, in yeah. fucking everybody. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, bro, I swear to God, I always say this to this day. Bro, you are a great, as the writer— you are a great freaking heel. 
Oh, like, I was bro, about. You, I was so fucking heel. I had real. Un, me and you might be the only two motherfuckers that had real heat. Real heat. Yeah, I mean, bro, you you <laughs> were great on the mic. You got real heel heat, and like you know, again, bro, you know, being Hogan's boy, yeah. that really overshadowed everything. But bro, to me, you were tailor made to be a freaking wrestling well, manager. When, when, and when I when I went to when Hogan was like, Hogan, me and Hogan are lifting weights. He's like, bro, I'm going back to TNA. I got a big deal. Fucking, you know, I'm gonna see if I can get you in. I'm like, well, oh, great. I said, well, I have an idea. Here's here's and so here's what my initial idea, and I don't even know if they ran a by you or not. But I'm like, listen, I'm not. I'm not Jerry Jeremy Borish material. That guy to be a backstage guy and to like that's that's not what I do. I'm not that guy. But I can right. fucking bring the heat. I wanted to do a segment called Bubba's shooting match or just shooting something like that, and it was just me literally shooting, like really kind of stirring up the shit. The yeah. real kind of like you kind of in the attitude era of WWF when you really got in there and stirred the shit up. I wanted to really like, you know, I'm the one, by the way, on the radio that broke the, the Karen Angle, you know, Jeff Jarrett deal. I'm the one that broke that. Some fucking listener called me up. And so maybe not that hard of a shoot, but like start some shit with the boys. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of my idea. And, you know, it, it, I, it, I don't think it, I don't know if, I don't even know if that was ever proposed to you or not. Never, pro never proposed to me, bro. And I think that would have been great. You know why? Because that fucking Bischoff is the one that shot it down. I promise you. Yeah, see, I, bro, I didn't know, I didn't know what that whole dynamic was because, bro, let's, let's face it, like, both of them hated me. So, like, I never knew what their dynamic, what, what Bischoff's dynamic was with you. This is all I cared about when I was writing TV. Bro, you are a great, you are a great character. Th th that's all I cared about. I can remember I one time is that I wasn't part of the show and you wrote me in. I re like, yeah. see, somebody's like, man, Vince, Ru Vince Russo is fucking out. I go, no, I remember one time I went to look at the sheet. They didn't have me in. And Russo came to me and go, I, I went to you. I think I saw you in Terry Taylor's office or something like that. And I'm like, hey, Vince, I am, can I just go home tonight because I ain't got shit to do? And you're like, no, bro. Fuck, hold on. And about 15 minutes later, you had me taking, I don't know, I was getting my ass kicked by somebody. <laughs> yeah, no, bro, you you were, gr you were great. I mean, you were a great character. I've said that since for the last but, 20 but, years. So anyway, long. before we get too far off track, with the with the awesome Kong deal, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm 5'11", 300, uh, you know, and so I could, you know, I, I could probably, if, if, if you guys, if the writers would have sat us down and said, listen, Kim, don't go out, you know, you're obviously uh, an upper, you, you have to kind of put her over a little bit. You know, Kim, you're, Bubba's a fucking jobber, and you're over. So let's not get that lost in the translation here. But we can fucking make, so we can draw some numbers with you whipping his fucking ass, and then you're going to, and then we'll let Bubba go over one time on a fucking double DQ fuck job with not, nothing clean. Like, she never does anything clean. The only time Bubba goes over is on a fuck job. And then on the final deal, you fucking do Bubba clean in the middle. Bro, you, you want to know the truth? Yeah. This is the God honest truth. Bro, at the time, I remember, you know, working with Kong, with, with Kong obviously. And, bro, she was, a, she was a sweetheart, and she was great. But, bro, I got to tell you, man, at that time, and we're going back to, you know, you know, the I guess the mid two thousand six. I don't even remember when it was nine, something it, like that. Yeah, nine, whatever it was. But bro, at that time, whatever was going on in her life, bro, she was a bit emotionally yeah. unstable, and yeah. she was like really up and down. Because, bro, I remembered, man, when I don't even know if you know this, but when when we got you out of there bro she kind of crumbled to the floor and started crying and all she kept saying over and over was i can't see i can't see and i i i, I didn't know what the heck like i was had some magic on. dust or some bullshit i, I don't know <laughs> i'll never forget that i'm like what what do you mean like why can't you see but but my point is bro like 
knowing at that point how she was a little unstable, I, I wouldn't have put you in that spot. Well, not only that, though, she didn't like the Hogan shove down shit either. And nobody, nobody really, really did. I mean, nobody yeah. liked it. Hogan came in, he changed the ring, which that was kind of TNA's gimmick. And the boys didn't yeah. like that. I even told yeah. Hogan, we were driving home one night. I'm like, Hogan, this fucking ring deal, these boys, because I was kind of like in the back, kind of trying to hear some of the bullshit. Because nobody, you knew, you know, everybody was two faced to Terry. Like you would, people would yeah. be like, you yeah. know, he, yeah. they were, they were, they they just were not necessarily because, just because he, just because of his status, and he could get anything done, as we know. And and so, but so I'm like Terry, shoot style, like they fucking the boys hate this ring. They hate this fucking ring. They, this was one of their gimmicks, and he's like, you know. I've got to go back to old school if we're going to take on Vince and this kind of shit. And and so, I mean, um, I so I was hated from day one just because who I was associated with. And uh, so, needless to say, uh, the TNA deal, uh, I, I did take, I will tell you this. I don't know if you go back and replay it. I wish I could play it right now for us, but I can't. But when I did the, when, when Mick Foley, and everybody to this day thinks it was a spud, when he was saying goodbye and I was the guy that said, don't let the door hit you in the ass and he fucking lit me up. He didn't, yeah. he didn't spud me at all. It was clean, but yeah. I, I took a hell of a bump and he laid it in there so good. And then they airbrushed me between commercials. Like I had a broken nose yeah. and I do. And that was one of the, that was one of the great greatest. I thought that was a good way to go out. And I, I didn't yeah. fit for TNA because I, I didn't, I didn't put my time in, you know, I was just a Hogan hanger. I was a Hogan nut hanger. And that's what I was. I mean, that's, you know, bro, I, I got to tell, I got to tell him what, what really gave him the heat, because it's like you said, bro, you know, Bro, listen, there's a lot of backstory you don't know, but the backstory is this. You know, the, the, the Dixie Carter f finds out about Jeff and Karen Angle when he swore up and down to her nothing was going on. Then she finds out on about it. On my show, it. by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She finds out about it. She sends me home. She sends him home. Meanwhile, me, me and Matt Conway... We start writing the TV and bro, we're really going in the direction of the younger guys. I remember we put the belt on AJ. Yeah. We were really going in the team. Man, and where you were a visionary on AJ, were you not? I mean, oh, you were a yeah. look at him now. Yeah. God. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and he so, ended up he's been up, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. Oh, no doubt. <clears throat> yeah. No doubt. So so you know, me and Conway now we're we're real because bro, you gotta remember up to that point, Jeff had the belt on himself. Right. And you can never get the belt off of Jeff. No, now, all yeah. of a sudden, you know, now all of a sudden with Jeff not there, okay, now we can concentrate. Well, bro, what, what I didn't know is behind my back, and that's how the wrestling business is, and that's why I hate it and I'm no longer a part of it, behind my back, Dixie is talking with Bischoff and Hogan. I know and it was nothing. and it was a package deal too. I'll tell package you that right, Neil. Deal, whole, I was I was whole, there when Hogan was on the phone and he was like, yep. "I gotta be able to bring in Bischoff yep. because of fucking Russo." I'm just yep. telling you right now, I'm not gonna yep. fucking go and without Bischoff because fucking Russo already did me dirty at Bash of the Beach, which yep. I swear well, we're gonna get to that obviously. But I swear to God, Vince, that was a fucking shoot. Bash with oh, the yeah. Beach was a shoot. Yeah, well, see, bro, but that, that, but that's what I was getting to. So, bro, he, he, here, here's the problem. When he came over, everything changed, and he brought all his boys. But, bro, the, the, the what he, re the, the one thing he did that like nobody would for, forgive, because I don't think you would have gotten so much heat if this had not happened. But bro, when he brought the nasties in, yeah, like that's when everybody was like, "All right, you know, bro, listen, you want to get in one or two guys, that's fine." Right. But like, that was really like, oh, and okay. I think that, bro. And I think he put him over against Aces and Eights first night, didn't he? Yeah, Something. and you know what? And, and bro, Bischoff, <laughs> Bischoff was was on our same page. He was like, you know, but. And I think that's what got you heat because, you know, you would, like you said, you were part of that package. But like I said, as a writer, you were freaking delivering. But, so you know, Kevin I, and, and Kevin and Hall didn't even really get over as hard as they should have with TNA because they were Hogan bringovers. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, and even Flair, like some of these yeah. some of these guys that are, you know, like I fucking one of my all time favorites. And I don't know what your opinion of him, of him is, but one of my all time favorite guys is Kevin Nash. 
I, oh, I, love I fucking love, love that dude. Yep. Yep. That dude's straight business. Like, he, he'll yes. sit there and tell you whether it's good for business or not, period. 1,000 percent, man. You know, 1,000 Like, in fact, all, we all disagree. Bischoff, you, me. All, I mean, we all can have different kind of opinions. But, man, I tell you, there's not a lot of people that will talk shit about Kevin Nash or Mark Calloway. I mean, like yeah, one thousand you know, percent. I mean, absolutely. You know, you can have your opinion about Hogan. You can have your opinion about you know fucking Flair, Mott. But boy, uh, Kevin Nash and and Taker were just straight about business. Now, I was also there on the WCW later runs when NWO had become rich and lazy. And right. that was a problem. I remember being in Hogan's dressing room and Hall would say, man, going out tonight and working would be a real buzzkill. Let's just go out and do five minutes on the mic. And then they would. And so that a lot of people don't realize that's probably a lot of the demise of WCW is when NWO yeah. started making so much fucking money and were so over. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not and saying the, that bad on Kevin at all, because yeah, why wouldn't yeah. you? I mean, if they're paying you four million just to go out and drink Miller Lights and, and eat pills, why the fuck not, right? Yeah, no, bro. That and 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 that, and that also that also goes to bash at the beach, which don't understand because, like, bro, the bullshit that's been said and the bullshit I've read, and w one of the biggest bullshit things is, oh man, but Russo was upset and Russo was frustrated. Uh, because you know Hulk, Hulk, uh, you know played his creative control card, bro. Hulk negotiated his creative control card. I had no problem with that. The heat was on WCW, man. If if I'm if I'm Hulk Hogan and I can get creative control, you're damn right. I am going to get creative control. So I never ever had any heat with hogan have you ever heard I, of that had that ever been done prior or been has it ever been since replicated or i mean did cena have it a little bit no did, no no never no and bro and, and you know what the funny thing is bro here's the funny thing you know i i told the man when when they signed him with tna they, they were scared to death to tell me and they came to me and i said bro listen you got to understand i will work with anybody I don't hold freaking grudges. If, if you believe Hulk will be good with the company, I don't have a problem. I said, but I'm just going to give you one word of advice. Don't give him creative control because it, it will cause you a massive headache. It will destroy they, the shit faster than it destroyed the shit. <laughs> and what did they do? They turned around and gave him creative control at TNA, and, and it was it was kind of the same thing. But I don't know of anybody else in the business who ever got not even Not even Mark? Not even Callaway? No, no, really? absolutely not. No, no, nope. not even fucking uh, like I guess Cena was pro or Stone Cold. None. No, never, never. Who nope. was your Who was your most favorite guy to write for? Like, because you know, you can, like you know, like writing encompasses two things, three things. One, how good is the guy at working? Two, can he draw money or ratings? And three, is he easy for me to talk to and kind of mold what I'm what I'm looking, you know, like malleable? Yeah. And four, yeah. can he cut a promo? Yeah, I would have to say, bro, my favorite was because it was so outside of the box, and he was he was so freaking good at it. My favorite was writing Goldust with Dustin. Really. Oh my God, bro! There, there, there were no limits and no boundaries to the, to that character. And when when Dustin put his shit on, he became a totally different person. I mean, bro, like I, I he did the Conan show, and bro, like they let me produce the segment. That that's how over he was, and at he the time. was really breaking barriers. Yes, what, yes, I mean things that we're doing now in that kind of world, he was doing yes. as a gimmick, but really hard selling it. Like I'm, I mean, fucking hard selling it, and so good, bro. Like he he was, bro. You 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 know in wrestling, bro, how you get a character over. Basically, it's really basic and fundamental. Just magnify who they are a billion times over, right? That, 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 because now they don't have to go out there and act. They're themselves. It's just magnified. Very rarely can you put a character on somebody and them get it over. 
And I mean, Goldust was nothing like Dustin Rhodes. But like I said, man. And the other thing about Goldust was, I mean, he was a hell of a hand. He was a hell of a hand. But the character was so over. Yeah. Well, it was almost like like almost Hogan. Hogan was the shit in the ring. I mean, Hogan fucking had about as many moves as I did. But right. his but his character was <laughs> so fucking over. Yes. Cena the same way. Although Cena's a pretty good hand, you know. Uh, you know, but Cena was so fu- there's you know there's those guys, the Stone Colds, the Rocks. Yep. You know, they didn't have to be the Shawn Michaels or the Ric Flairs or the guys that technically were just unbelievable as far right. as hell of a like you know the you know. Jericho, as far as being uh, workers, their fucking gimmicks were so over that they you know, ultimate warrior. People want to talk yep. shit about him. Motherfucker had three moves at best, and one of them was shaking the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 he could go out there and was over like a motherfucker before he even went in. He didn't even have to yep. fucking work. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And and and, D- and Dustin was that guy. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal, man. Phenomenal talent. Well, let's not forget about who this fucking dad was, one of the greatest of all time. Oh, as well. yeah, of course, man. Of course. I got a yeah. chance to work Dusty in this in a in a like a fairgrounds match on the latter part of his career. It was me and him's tag team against uh, Kevin Sullivan and some other dude. And Dusty goes, let me just tell you something right now, Bubba. I'm getting old as fuck. You got to go out there and do 10 minutes, then tag me in, and I'll fucking clean it all up for us, okay? (laughs) I said, said, okay. I said, I'm just honored, man, to be able to get a fucking picture in the ring with you. He goes, oh, yeah, man. We'll take pictures and drink beers later, my friend, but we got a job to do. I mean, he was old school, you know? Yeah, tremendous, man. But, I mean, so, you know, I I didn't know that you actually went to, Indiana State University Evansville. Now, what the yes. fuck? Yeah, yeah. Because I went believe- to Indiana State Terre Haute. Oh, did you really? And I, I start. Yeah. And I, and yeah, you graduated yeah. in '83, and yes. I went to Indiana State Terre Haute in 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 '84. So I wow. didn't even know there was an Indiana State Evansville. And of all fucking places, here you are. I think in Farmington, New York, or wherever the fuck you're from. And how do you get to Indiana State Evansville? How the fuck? Yeah. Bro, believe it or not, man, I I had a friend that that was going there. And uh, he was the sports editor of the uh, mag of the of the uh, student newspaper, and uh, he basically said, "Hey, man, I can get you a scholarship uh, if you you know you come to school here and you know you be the assistant sports editor." So literally, I got a scholarship. I went to Evansville, Indiana. I didn't know anything about it, which but is a shithole. It's a shithole of a fucking town. I mean, Evansville, Indiana, there ain't shit going on, just like Terra. Yeah, I can't, I can't say that, bro. I listen. I agree with you one billion percent, but I can't publicly say that because my wife's from Evansville. Well, yeah, she. Hey, I'm a Hoosier too now, so yeah. tell her. I mean, you know, but we, <laughs> hey, we got to be honest. Indiana, there's not a lot of shit happening. I'm from Warsaw, Indiana, and it's yeah. it's far smaller than than Evansville. Yes. But yes. at least you got you got yourself a good Hoosier, right? And you've been yes. married what forty years. Yeah, 40. We're going on 40 years, bro. 40 years this year. And it isn't one of the reasons why I think you left the Vince, I think maybe the first or second time, was when he started then doing Thursdays, and he was like, he, you had to double your workload and on the road. And you, I th- I don't think there was heat on that one. I just think you went, I, it's been, I've been, I've been told through, you know, sources over the years that, that you just said went to Vince and was like, bro, I, I, I got a family, and I, I can't do double the work and be double on the road now that you're doing the Thursday franchise. So, I mean, I, I think that's why you left Vince one time, wasn't it? Well, what had happened, bro, and I'm, I'm glad that you brought Evansville up because what, what happened, bro, is, you know, Vince added SmackDown, ne- ne- never told me and Ed Ferrara, just assumed uh, it's easy to write another show, did, did not realize that, we left our blood, sweat, and tears on every Raw show we wrote. We agonized over those shows. Now you're adding another show. And, you know, bro, we we want it to be the best it can be. So basically what I did was I went in his office and I said, listen, bro, with another show, I said, you know, my wife is raising her kid, my kids on her own. Right. I, I had no family around. Bubba, what I wanted to do was... I wanted my wife to be able to move back to Evansville. Right. So she could be around family, raising the kids. And if that meant 
I had to go there on the weekends. I mean, whatever it meant, but I wanted to get her around family. Yeah, and you know, and and, never- and, and there's and I be, having grown up in Indiana, um, yeah. it's a it's a different vibe. It's more of a community yes. feel. It's a smaller yes. town feel. It's a, it's really yes. honestly a better place to raise a family yes. than yes. fucked up New York. I mean, I'm just yeah, being honest. Absolutely. And uh, and that's that's what I proposed to him. And bro, I'll never forget, man. He looked me in the eye and he says, Vince, I don't know what the problem is. You're making enough money. Not you're making enough money now. Just hire a nanny to take care of your kids. Oh, and bro, you say that to a proud New York Italian, bro. When those words came out, who already has a reputation of being a cocksucker, Dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, I mean, you know, when, when, I mean, your reputation, Vince, was you were a New Yorker and you wore that shit on your sleeve. You didn't give a fuck. Yes. I mean, you didn't give a fuck. Yeah, bro. When those words came out of his mouth, it was game over. I, I, I would, I could not have worked another day for that man. It was game over. And, and and see, like, see, you're, you're you're actually being interviewed by a real radio person now. Nobody. How many other people have brought up that you fucking went to Indiana State, Evansville? Is that before or after we talk about David Arquette? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with you putting the strap on David Arquette. Because I really know, but you know yeah, why? Well, be, because you know why? Those... Because it, it made sense. You pop culturally got so much coverage from that, and and, and 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 the boy, like a guy like Mark Calloway, a guy like Mark Calloway and Kevin Nash would understand the business that we're fucking putting asses in the seats and eyeballs on the screens. And Arquette's not going to have a fucking, you know, a seven-week run at the strap. It's going to be a fucking, it's going to be a one-and-done gimmick at best. And he's going to be on The Tonight Show. And it's going to be on David Letterman. And we're going to get that many motherfuckers. You know, we're in the fucking entertainment business. And so I I never thought the Arquette or the Rodman or any of that shit was hokey. I thought it, I thought it put it to the mainstream more, you know, more so and more believable than other. I mean, Vince incorporated Muhammad Ali and and, and yeah. WrestleMania, Mike Tyson, uh, yeah. Liberace. I mean, yeah. all, 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 <laughs> right? That's the uh, bro. That that that's the wrestling purist who have convinced themselves that wrestling is real. So they they don't understand the entertainment aspect, like you said, pop culture, casual yeah. wrestling fans. They'll never understand that. The woman that lives in Fort Wayne, Indiana, knows who David Arquette is. The woman that lives in Fort Wayne, Indiana, didn't know who Disco Inferno was. So, <laughs> so, so, bro, like, you know, the next morning, bro, the next morning, okay, we put the belt on Arquette. The next morning, I wake up. Go down to the front desk, you know, get a cup of coffee. And at that time, the USA Today. Right. Bro, it was on the cover of the USA Today. And how many the times had the WCW been on the right. cover of even with Hogan, with NWO, with, you know, arguably probably the most successful franchise in WCW's history would have been NWO, right? I mean, Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so we've agreed to that. That never made the front right. page of the USA Today. Bro, For- the next day, the next week, he goes on the movie set. I think it was 3,000 miles to Graceland or something yeah. like that. Yeah. He goes to the movie set. Bro, Kevin Cosner, Kurt Russell, Courtney Cox with the WCW championship belt free of charge, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Free of charge. Uh, okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, that that killed WCW. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. That, is that the original? Now there was this big, uh, big who done it about who had the original WCW champions belt, and at one time Hogan said he had it, and then I think the guy, the the one guy who d- does the Flair uh, podcast, does he own it now or like the, the oh, original? Sure Conrad, New York- he, he probably does. Conrad owns everything. I I, w- I wouldn't doubt it, man. Uh, Vince Russo on the phone. And Vince, man, uh, one on one, I got a lot more for you. But two, we ought to do this more often just because we are yeah, bro, two outcasts te- te- of this whole fucking deal. Me. Bro, you teased me a couple of times. A couple of times I, I got a direct message from you on, on Twitter, and I'm all excited. Then you disappeared well, off the Well, motherfucker, I got yard. banned from Twitter. I can't even I, – I, I, they permanently <laughs> banned me for – Yeah, yeah you there one day, gone the next, bro. No, fuck. <laughs> I know. Then when I got it this time, I'm like, all right, this is a rib. No, this, it's not a rib. Know. It's not a rib, bro. It's not it's, it's not a rib. So, what, Vince, do you remember 
when you were writing for Vince, I think it was like 97, and Raw, you know, B- Bischoff was writing the 83 week bullshit. They're on fire. You're starting to write in the Attitude Era, really, really fucking turning it up. And do you remember the 84th? Do you remember the day of the 84th week where you guys finally beat him? Bro, I really don't, and I will tell you why. And I don't either. Like, I don't yeah. specifically remember what show it was that you beat. Like, yeah. He pounds his chest about this 83 weeks bullshit, <laughs> but I've, I've, I've actually looked into it as to when did Vince Russo knock off Bischoff. Yeah. Yeah, no, bro, listen, people don't understand this. R- writing a, a two-hour television show every single week you are so focused on the next show and the next and the next. Bro, you don't have time to stop and smell the roses. Literally, when when we wound up finally getting the ratings back, bro, it was just another show because there was another show to write next week. So, you know, everybody always asks, you know, we had this big celebration. Bro, I couldn't even tell you what show it was. You know, Vince didn't come to you and say, Russo, you finally nope. fucking did it. You, nope, not at all. I we see, just I, we I just, just kept going, man. But I think I think you had that. You had Val. I think you had D Generation X. I think you had yeah. the Taker. I think you started the Taker Kane feud. Then, but I think- bro, you want to know? You I, I got to be honest with you. And again, listen, Eric. You know, does not think very highly of me. And I don't me- think. Hold on, I don't think very fucking highly of him because yeah. he's yeah. a motherfucking one way asshole. And that's my official statement of him. And I had a lot of miles with that guy. And if he wants to talk shit about how I rode Hogan's fucking coattails, I made Hogan one hundred and forty one fucking million dollars, and I lost my job and and been made to look like the biggest motherfucking stupid ass ever for letting him fuck my wife. The joke's on me. And Eric Bischoff, you're a nut hugger too. I mean, you wouldn't be shit without Hulk Hogan. And I did the biggest job in the history of fucking jobs for Hulk Hogan when he by letting him fuck my wife and and testifying the way I did uh, uh, at the at 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 the, the jury trial. Uh, I could have said, you know, I could have testified differently and he would have gotten nothing. So, you know, Bischoff can fuck off, in my opinion. I didn't know if you knew, if you had any idea where I stood with regards to him, but here it is. Fuck you, Eric Bischoff. So just to clear things up. I want to ask you this question. Uh, What what are the odds of you making me $141 million? Listen, yeah, like, and and meanwhile, I'm the outcast. Hogan uh, can't, you know, won't talk to me, fucking treats me like a piece of shit. You know, only thing I'm guilty of is I let him fuck my wife at his lowest moment, and my home surveillance system caught it, and somebody stole it from me and distributed it. But nobody knows that. They only know that Bubba fucking did Hogan dirty. Nobody knows is that I'm the motherfucking one that did the ultimate job, period. Yeah. Well, here you are, bro. Back on your feet better than ever. But but this, Bischoff, this- Bischoff has gone on and said some just unbelievable yeah. bullshit about me and him and I were in we we were we were in the trenches together when the whole Hogan team and for yeah. him to fucking be, you know he's flat out lied about a lot of shit he really has and I know bro that you fucking you know listen to his shit or hear some of his shit about his spin on a lot of stuff and a lot of it's very very wrong period yeah. well I I will tell you this bro and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you and I think you'll agree with me as a wrestling fan Bro, here's the main reason why that streak ended. And and it really wasn't, you know, the Attitude Era creative, what we were doing. Here's why it really ended, bro. Bro, you know, he was in charge of creative. And, bro, the NWO was so bastardized and so watered down at that point where it didn't mean anything anymore and they kept beating that dead horse beating that dead horse it 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 was dead and over that created the opportunity for us bro that's what really happened can i shorten what you just said yeah and you tell me if you agree or not it ended because bischoff became a mark for himself i mean at, at the end of the day, he became a fucking mark for himself. He marked out to creating this big fucking franchise, infused himself into it, let everybody and their brother. Man, if NWO would have stayed Hogan, Nash, Kevin, maybe X-Pac, 
You know, but by the end of the day, with fuck, had Virgil in there, and that's they had what I'm Ho- Horace in there. That's what I'm saying. And, and that, so, that's what op- that's what opened the door for us, bro. It was so watered down; it didn't mean anything right, anymore. Right, right. And so again, Bischoff is still to this fucking day a mark for himself. Let's, if you look at your lineage and how you got into the business. I mean, I know it started out with a letter to Linda McMahon, but nonetheless, <laughs> you fucking started and, and, and you got yourself up to, to head writer and you and you were with the boys. And I know that you got trained by Johnny Rods and at, at Gleason's. And, and I got a God, Johnny. Let me try to think of the people that got changed. I, mean, I think uh, Taz, oh, Dream, Dreamer, Devon, yep. Bubba Ray. Bubba. And yep. people don't know that Gleason's gym wasn't like a, like a, a wrestling facility. Nope. It was a nope. it was a well established like seventy year lineage, like going back to the twenties and thirties boxing gym. Yes, and Johnny hardcore. and Johnny Rods would just get a ring in the corner, kind of. That's it. Yeah. And, and and have why the by eighty five percent of the whole everybody was boxing. Other dudes were doing bumps and high spots over bro, there. How do you, how, how, bro, you are so dead on about that. I'm curious. How, how do you know that? Because like, I, I know. Because I know. A guy the, in Florida. How did you know what the hell was going on in Brooklyn? Because I'm I. I know a little bit about wrestling. I mean, I yeah, Hogan would tell me the one good thing about being Hogan's best friend for how many years I was. I mean, I was literally his best friend. Like, you know, yeah. when he, when he would go into surgery, I don't know if people know this, but when he would go into surgery, he would make them I had to sign a form and get scrubbed up and I would go into surgery with him cuz he was afraid that people were going to take pictures of his penis. So I would be, I would, be, I would actually go into surgery with them. He's like, bro, you know, I don't want him to take a picture. Some nurse taking a picture of my wiener. So you know, like Dizek. So I got biz up a Diz up here as my eyes and ears. So, so, but you know, but Hogan would tell me some of these stories. Like Hogan would, he's, I mean, the one thing about Hogan is he fucking knows everything about. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, he's man. very knowledgeable. Absolutely. He also knows yes. how to. He also knows how to fucking work. Uh, in all kinds of different ways, but yeah, I knew about Gleason's and I think yeah. Devon and Bubba Ray, yep, and yep. and and all those guys. And more important, pe- people don't realize that where where Vince Russo got trained, it was predominantly known as. I mean, there's only probably been ten, maybe eight to ten real big wrestling superstars come out of there. Most wrestling superstars come out of you know all kinds of different other areas. I think D- I, does Devon and Bubba Dudley still have a gym? They run separate gyms. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, think Bubba yeah. Dudley moved back up to you, did he not? Yeah. No. He. Uh, he's. Uh, I think. Well, he moved back to. I think he's in Connecticut. I Is think. he? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That guy scares the shit out of me. He's. Yeah. I mean, because he's working. But I. Th- one time he walked up to me. He goes, "I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you." We were at TNA. We were at TNA, and yeah. uh, and I was at catering or something. He goes, "I'm gonna fucking beat the shit out of you," and I'm like. What I do, Ryan goes. I don't. Know, everybody just fucking hates you because you're a piece of shit. You fucking big, you know. Thing. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, fuck. So I went back and told Hogan. Hogan goes, man, they're here. They're working you. So I went back and I went. I said, Bubba, are you working me? He goes, no, I just shoot. I fucking hate you. So he, he, he <laughs> so I was completely afraid. So later yeah. that night, man, I, I I was getting ready to get my car, and he goes, hey, or whatever. He goes. I was just fucking working, you kid, but you're such a mark. <laughs> and so then he puts it over. He yeah. goes, but you're such a fucking mark that you put it over. So I was like, I can't yeah, win. Man. I can't win with you. Yeah. I can't win I with love, you. Bro, there, there's a, all that whole New York clique, man. I, I love all those guys. You know, Dreamer and Bubba and Devon and Taz. I love all. I'm still good buddies with uh, Stevie uh, Richards. Uh, what a great crew, man. And so I think I think so. We go to ninety seven. We break the eighty three week streak, you know. And I think at that time you're working. I think the Rock. I think you're working the Rock. I think Stone you got. Cold. I think you got Stone Cold. I think you got Mick, uh, D Generation X. You got the Take. I think you started the Taker Kane deal. I think you did. Yeah. You wrote that. Yeah. And uh, Sable Val. Oh man, Val. He's cool as hell. Did you like Val? Oh, I loved the man. I loved him. Bro, you know, you want to hear a funny backstory for that, bro? Like, when they, they don't even do this anymore, bro. This doesn't even exist. What would happen would be these wrestlers would be in training, and then I would get the heads up, so-and-so is ready. Okay, so I would get the heads up that Sean Morley is ready. So they like be at Ohio oh, Valley or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, Bubba, what I – do at that point was I would get together with that talent and I would spend hours with them 
picking their brain, who they really were, what motivated what motivated them to really try to develop a character specifically for them. So, bro, I'm I'm spending hours with Val and bro when it comes to politics. This freaking guy knows everything and all he used to talk was politics. Man, you now, get him, Mick Foley and Kane in a room yes. and you got yes. a fucking radio talk show right now. Yes. I'm telling you that right now. Yes. Now the only problem is, bro, I've got a right for this guy and I know shit about politics. So there's no way there's no way I could make him a political character and no. know what the hell I'm doing. Right. So what I'm doing is, bro, is he's talking his politics. I'm looking at him. I'm looking at him. And this is all I could think of. Bro, you look like a sleazy porn star. <laughs> I mean, with, with all due respect, like, and bro, sure enough, I'm like, Val, listen, I got to tell you, man, this is all I'm getting out of this. And then I had to go pitch Val Venus to Vince, to Vince McMahon. And how did how did the pitch how did the pitch meeting go? You're gonna be like Vince. We're gonna have him come out with a towel and say <laughs> hello, ladies, and like yeah, and, the, and mean, everybody's bro, gonna he, pop. And what 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 was Vince's first reaction? I'm gonna tell you the first read. Then I'm gonna tell you a story you're gonna love, bro. So, bro, his By first way, Vince reaction Russo, is Vince Russo on the show. And Vince, tell everybody before we get too far where they can find you. And I know you're on Patreon. I know you're on. You got a YouTube channel. Yeah, guys, I uh, yeah I podcast for a living, man. I, I'm I'm a uh, I'm I, I like I'm a pro podcaster now because I got the microphone closer. Yeah, uh, thanks <laughs> well, at least friend, you look man. like a fucking radio guy now. I mean, Jesus. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, be like but you, you going out to the ring in some fucking tennis shoes instead of having your fucking patent leather boots or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, guys, just go to Russo'sBrand.com. I got a lot of, I do a lot of shows with a lot of wrestlers, and we have conversations like this, man. It's a lot of fun, bro. Just go to Russo'sBrand.com. Russo'sBrand.com. That'll put you where you need to be. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I tell Vince, I say, I, I said, you know, Vince, this is all I got. And, and I lay out Val Venus. He's a porn star, this and that. And bro, like I could Vince's face went from like, I can't believe you're pitching this to I love this. And he immediately got on the phone with Val. I was there when he pitched it to uh, Sean. But bro, here's the best story that you will love. So, bro, we have to do his vignettes. Right. We hire Jenna Jameson. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Right. We go to Bruce Pritchard. Bruce Pritchard had a pretty nice house in um in Connecticut. We we go to Bruce Pritchard with, with Sean Val and Jenna Jameson. Bro, we got Jenna Jameson in Bruce Pritchard's hot tub with Val buck naked. And the, the 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 vignettes Val is cutting with Gemma, Jenna Jameson, and where Bruce and I are looking at each other like, holy shit! Like this is, uh, and this it, is uh, Jenna Jameson when she was way over, when she yeah, was way, way over, over, right? Way over, bro. Right. So man, we get all these scenarios in the can, and bro, I'm you talk about pushing the envelope. Well, that's what you did though, and that's what got you over. So now, bro, I've got to show Vince these vignettes. So I got to sit there with him while he's watching Jenna Jameson and Sean Morley in the hot tub in the whole nine yards. Bro, he finishes watching all the vignettes, then proceeds to tell me he's not going to air any of them because Jenna James is not attractive. What? Yeah, yeah, bro. I swear to God, she, 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 she's not attractive. So I'm not. He, I don't want to use the word ugly. Right. But, but you that's know, might as well. That, that's, yeah, that's what he said. Unattractive and, 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 equals and ugly. I was like, bro, like, are you, bro? She was the hottest yep. thing on the planet. And she was also forbidden fruit. She was naughty porn. So like, so it was like, you know, not only was she hot but she's naughty so that's like another little twist to the deal and your p1 your 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 view the the hardcore you know mar the people are watching your your your, yes. your product they know who the fuck she is yes broke my broke my heart bro so did, did all that shit get scrapped 
I, bro, I think he might have played one or two of them, and we had like ten weeks worth. Oh, and, and was it never just played him the hot tub was one? It, was it never just, played the hot tub one? And was it just him and her in a hot tub? And yeah, yep. Who yep. was who? How about K- K- Stacy Keebler? Man, she was yeah. hot. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, you were, you wrote for Stacy, did you not? No, bro. I w- bro. I was there when Stacy won. There was a contest for a new Nitro girl. Right, right. So I was there when Stacy won, and I'm like, wait a minute, man. She can't just be a Nitro girl. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And 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 that's when we gave her Mrs. Peacock, and she became a character on. Oh, television. she was over too, was she yeah. not? Yeah. So yeah. then I think or you want you want to hear another another great Vince story. Oh yeah. I, I'll, I'll give you two more quick ones, and you will absolutely love them. Here, here here's my second favorite, bro. The uh, Blair Witch Project is about to come out, right? And I don't know if you remember this or not, Bubba, but they they did a campaign online, and w- you didn't know if it was a shoot or not. Well, you I mean, remember- it, I remember watching, and I remember going to the fucking movie theater saying, "I just got worked." I just got right. fucking. I just got fucking worked. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. But bro, everyone, everyone was talking oh, about. Oh, it was the so. Blair Witch. It was so pop culturally. It was the thing. Yes. Bro, so listen to this. So, at the time, Sable is suing the WWE. Okay, so me and Ed Ferrara, we get Stevie Richards and the Blue Meanie. They were doing the Blue World right, Order. Right. We get them like deep in the woods of Connecticut and we start shooting this parody, the blonde bitch project. Oh, and it was, I to, love it, it. Was to, it was to get it, saved. It, it was okay? to end around her a little bit, bro. When you talk about the close up of uh, up uh, Meanie's nose with the, with the snuff. bro, it was for not, we could not stop laughing. Did you, were you guys able to air it? Okay, I got it. bro. I've got I'm, I always have to show Vince after the fact, right? You always got to and you got to deal with standards and practices and all yeah, that bullshit, yeah. right? So, bro, I show Vince. We watch this whole series play out. You know, he he, he always had the glasses at the end of the nose like this. Everybody right. will always tell you. So after watching this, he looks up at me. Here was his first question. What's this? And I'm like, Vince, this movie came out last weekend, The Blair Witch Project. Everybody is talking about it. Don't know if it's a work or shoot. I go through the entire history of the, this is a takeoff on that. And it was the number one movie in America. Like it was, it was like so fucking over. Bro, you know what he said to me? (laughs) Nobody's going to go see that movie. And he killed it. (sighs) Here's my third favorite, bro. You will love this. Okay, Joe. God, I, I wish Walsh. you. I wish you had. A, I wish you had. A, you had. A, you had access to that foot. I mean, I know you don't own it. They have it, but yeah. God. Oh, bro, it was phenomenal. <clears throat> bro, Joe Walsh. I had. Jo- at- I've had Joe. I've had interactions with him. I got a Joe Walsh story too, but I want to hear yours. Okay, Joe Walsh just comes out with Rocky Mountain Way. Yes. Okay. Wants to perform it at I I I I believe it was WrestleMania. If it wasn't WrestleMania, it was either SummerSlam or Royal Rumble. One of the those are big pay per views. Wanted to perform it absolutely free for the exposure, just to put it over, just to put it over, and the, and this everybody was playing the song. Right, every rock station in America was <laughs> all. It was a fucking. I mean, it, I think it sold like. 18 million singles or something yeah, like that. Ridiculous. <laughs> right. Ridiculous. Uh, so gratis, nothing, zero. Go to Vince. Bro, you're not going to believe this. Vince, blah, blah, blah. Ah, uh, I'm not interested. Vince never heard of Joe Walsh. <laughs> never heard of Rocky. Turned it down, bro, for free. For free. What like he was, you know, needing a big rider or his own Hogan like dressing room with forty five yeah. you know, forty five cases of Miller Lite or <laughs> or, or no, eighteen tickets the... or anything like that. Just bring my right, stupid I, yeah. ass in here and sing Rocky Mountain Way. That's it. Get man. the fuck that's out. It. The fans, everybody in the whole goddamn group a place would have been singing along with it. Oh, everybody man. that's watching it would have popped it. He would have been able to use it and Vince says, Not interested, brother. Yeah. N- never heard never heard of him. So in 99, I think you and Vince got that falling out because, you know, he wants you to start writing Thursdays. You're like, listen, my wife is practically, you know, ready to leave me. I got to get, I got to, I can't, I can't. 
And so and I think at that point, and then I think within days, I th- Turner already had you signed up. I think, is that yeah. right? Like within days. Well, yeah, bro. When, when, when I got on the plane to go down there and meet with them, once I got on the plane, I knew I was going to go work for them because th- there's no way Vince wasn't going to find out. So when I got on that plane, I knew darn well I was going to work for WWE. So you go there. Do you meet with Siegel? Who do you meet with? Yeah, man, I met with Siegel. I, I think the other big wig at the time was Jamie Kellner. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I heard Hogan they, they, talk about him a little bit. Yeah, they they brought them all in. They and so now at in. that point, did what was the hierarchy of booking? Like, were they at the, how did they sell it to you, or how, what did they say you were going to do? Because I mean, here you are coming, big slinging dick, head rider out of W uh, WWF WWE, and you not you guys were now beating them. They were slipping a little bit. Their 83 weeks run was over. Had had Bischoff kind of worn out his welcome at that point? Or uh, Bischoff was fired at that point. Oh, he was I, gone. Yeah, he was gone. He he was long gone, and they needed you know they needed somebody to do the creative. They got the call from me out of nowhere, and that's when we got together. And we but Hogan was still on roster, right? Yes. Yeah, Hogan yes. was on roster. So anytime, like when Bischoff would be hanging out af- post October '99. He was just one of Hogan's nut nut huggers like me. Uh yeah, he was yeah, he was never around. Once I started working for them, I mean, you know, Eric was nowhere to be. So found. then so from October of ninety nine until I think what was Bash of the Beach? Um Mar- March, Mar- March of well, 2000. Well, bro, I I actually worked there October uh, October to January. All right. Then then the politics kicked in and I got the old we want to go in another direction. And I was like, fine, you go only in been your there direction. three months. Yeah, three months. Go and, and the ratings were up, by the way. Right. I said, fine, go in your direction. I'm gonna go home. Just send me my paycheck. Sure enough, bro, they put Sullivan in charge. The ratings went back in the shitter. They called me back, but that's when Bischoff, I, I mean a uh, Siegel. Oh, uh, Vince, I want you to meet with somebody. I think I think that was sold out, and it was like um, I think I think did you have that Tank Abbott Sid Sid angle? Maybe, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I think that was the possibly. Yeah, and, and, I, I, and, I, yeah, I can't remember. And then that, and then uh, that was January of 2020, and yeah. I think it was sold out, and then um, and then Sullivan comes in. Yeah, yeah, he in January. Yeah. You're right, and, right. And, and so the ratings went right back to where they were before they hired me. Right. Siegel calls me back. Now he wants me to come back, but he wants me to meet somebody at a restaurant. I knew it was Bischoff. In Atlanta? Bro. In Atlanta or up there? In Atlanta. Right. Uh, uh, hops. Hops, bro. I'll never forget. Man, it. not even a good fucking place like a shitty joint. Hops. <laughs> I mean, yeah. fuck. What about Ruth Chris or some bullshit? Come on now. No, Hops. Oh. Which is now out of business. Hops. I know. I'm familiar. It's like an old fucking yeah. microbrewery bullshit. I know what it was. <laughs> fucking bullshit. Bro, the minute, the minute I sat down at that table with him, bro, it was oil and water. Like there, there, there is no way in the world these two human beings that were was it just so you and him? Was it just you and him? Just me and him, bro. And so, like, how does see that? I, you've not really talked about that a lot. No, nobody's but, ever asked about. Well, that. I need to. I'm motherfucking asking about it. I mean, because <laughs> yeah, because yeah. P, I knew I knew from Hogan that that this meeting took place, but I yeah. never. I I I remember Hogan. We were training. He's like, oh. Fucking Bischoff's meeting Russo today. And that's all I knew. I never knew anything else, and I've never heard in the business about it or nothing. But I did know there was a meeting, and I never, never heard the outcome. And I know that you've not spoke about it. Yeah, yeah, bro. The minute we sat down, it was like, did you even say what's up, Eric? Like, I mean, or was it just like two cats fighting in a fucking gunny sack? Yeah, bro. You know what it is? It's like. Two people cordially trying to get along, but it's you, you, you're just so completely opposite. It's it's never going to work in a million. So years. at that point, is he like wanting to reinvent the NWO, or and you're like, no, I'm going to kind of bring you know kind of my new attitude era from where I just came from that that worked, or like what well, was he? He he was the problem, bro. You know. Brad Se- the way Brad Siegel put it to me, I want you to meet Eric Bischoff. I want you guys to work together. 
Now you got to understand, bro. At that point, I can't say no. And again, I, this is, and again, this is March of 2020. I'm sorry, no, March, is, March, March of 2000. No, this is January. This is when I came back in oh, January. Oh, okay. This is January. Okay, yeah. January 2000. Right. So you got to understand, bro. Like I can't say no because if I say no, now I'm a. Now it's your. Now you're the problem. Now I'm the problem, and you know now I'm not filling filling my obligations. Right. So. I want plus, you guys- plus, let's just not be honest. Turner yeah. paid well. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I mean, but when he go, he, you know, his directions to me was, I want you guys to work together. He never told me what Bischoff's official role was, what his title was. Ne- never told. Basically, I want you guys to work together. And I bet you he said the same thing to Eric. Either that. Or he told Eric he was in charge of me. Right. I, I don't know. But probably, he never told me that. Probably the latter, because you know how fucking much of a narcissistic asshole fucking Bischoff is. Yeah. So, so. Because okay, Bischoff, but, I mean, they probably had to tell him that to even take the fucking meeting. I, I to this day, I don't know what you they didn't told say it. I did. So anyway, continue on, Vince. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, bro, we, we, we start working together. And bro, this is this is how Eric was at WCW. This is how Eric was at TNA, and this is where it just could never work. First of all, bro, we're completely opposites. Bro, Eric gets off on being important. Right. Eric gets off on intimidating people. Eric is a bit arrogant. Eric has you used to. Now, I'm talking about the Eric I worked with. Eric had a chip on his shoulder. Um, you know, his you know, his status was important to him. Money was important. Well, to I mean, him. he wrote himself into a lot of the a lot of the angles. Yeah, no, right. On the other hand, bro, I am blue collar all the way in the trenches, get the hands dirty, whatever it takes. If I gotta work 20 hours a day, I mean that's what I'm going to do. So th- there's polar opposites there. So what what it eventually turns into is Vince doing all the work and Eric being the Tuesday morning quarterback. That's so you that's, ri- you write it and then he fucking critiques it basically. Yes. Yes. And 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 then, and then at that point and I got to think that you know the more that, he, that it, even if you write and this is like anytime that I when I've been in radio and we've had consultants come in I've and they and they pick apart whatever I would often tell management do you know that if they didn't pick shit apart if something was absolutely perfect they wouldn't have a fucking job. So, right. so meanwhile, you could write, you know, the greatest right. shit ever, best yes. shit ever, best promos ever, best in and out, shippy fucking yo, high spots. This guy's going over, that guy's going over. This one's clean. This one's a fucking DQ Willie. And in order for him to be able to validate his standing, he's got to find all kinds of shit wrong with it. Yeah, and you, bro, you can, in wrestling where you're creating it, bro, you could find shit wrong with everything. Oh yeah, if, if, if that's what you're looking for, you could say, hey, you know what, wrong. you fucking walked into the ring wrong way, buddy, right? You yeah, I mean? <laughs> absolutely. So, so it, it started becoming more of Vince doing all the work, Eric being the the uh, the Tuesday morning quarterback, and me really getting pissed off. So what happens, Bubba, is I wind up calling Brad Siegel, right? And I basically said, Brad, let him write the fucking TV. I, I, I can't work like this anymore, bro, where I'm doing all the work and, and he's Tuesday morning quarterback with his red pen and crossing shit out. Let him write the television. And like how much was like, let's say percentage wise, was he red pinning? Like if it was five, ten percent, you might be able to work with that. But was it just drastic? And writing yeah, TV yeah, minute bro, by I, minute is is I, tough. Yeah, I, I I'd say twenty to twenty five percent. Yeah, but that means you got to completely re fucking time yeah. the whole show. And not only that, bro, you're re timing the show, and the the stuff he doesn't like, he doesn't have suggestions to with for any with anything right. better. So he wants to cut out six minutes, but you don't got six minutes of anything else I'm supposed to put in there. Exactly. Right. So I finally call Siegel. I'm like, bro, let him write the TV. Like, seriously. Because l- l- let's face it, Bob, l- let's just be honest. He's looking at the guy. W- when we sat down at that table at Hops, he's sitting across the guy 
that was somewhat responsible for him losing his job. Right. When, when, when WWE started kicking WCW's ass and the 83 weeks was over, he was out the door. Now he's sitting across from the guy that was writing for WWE. And you and I know damn well, he wants his old job back. Right. And I mean, it's exactly what you said. It's human nature. It's human nature. And, and you know he what? Wants... And, and, and if you were to be totally honest, you would be the same way. If, if, well, if, I, if, absolutely. If you had gotten absolutely. your ass kicked and then the yes. guy that kicked your ass came in and your boss told you to play play nice, you just naturally would be like, fuck, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So that's why I said to Brad, bro, I know he wants to write to TV. I know he wants to be in charge. Let him write to TV. By the way, I'm very proud of your mic skills right now. They're fucking getting thank that, that mic. That's getting closer and closer. You. We'll <laughs> have you. A, we'll, I mean, we will have you as a real radio guy here in a fucking. And by the, by the yeah. And, I mean, then, <laughs> and then when I'm a real radio guy, you're going to make me 141 million. <clears throat> no, but I will tell you this. I'll, I'll fucking I'll write you from time to time. If that thing is getting too far away and say, bitch, you need to bring that mic back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so so bubble. What I happened? wish I could make you 141 million. You'd appreciate Appreciate it, motherfucker, and return oh, you my phone call. I would, bro. Please. You know I would, bro. Yes. Bro, uh, so Brad Siegel calls this emergency meeting. It because Brad Siegel's on location somewhere in LA. I got to fly from Atlanta to LA. We meet in a <clears throat> in a trailer, <clears throat> the three of us. You, Siegel, so he, and, and, and Bischoff. Yeah, here's what Bischoff always hated about me because I was probably the only one who ever did this bro whatever i had to say about the guy i said to the guy i, I i'm not the behind new yorkers are not the behind the back we're, we're not that way bro if there's an issue i'm going to tell you there's an issue and why there's an issue and then we'll, we'll, we'll settle that issue meanwhile knowing you both he's completely opposite just to let you know <laughs> yeah okay you you let them know hey, i did i'm a third party person in this deal between you and him and i my my opinion is what i just said so, bro, I, in front of him, I, 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 I laid it out to Brad. Brad, I'm doing all the work. He's coming in as the Tuesday morning quarterback with his red pen. Let him write the show. I, I said it right in front of Eric, and, like, I could tell Eric steaming, right? So now, bro, Brad, no, 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 Vince. And Brad said in front of Eric, I want you to write the show. Meaning you. Meaning right, me. Right, he points to you. So now, bro, listen to this. And again, see, Bubba, this is why you're so spectacular. Because nobody's ever gotten any of this. I know. Nobody. That's why, motherfucker, see, I'm, because you never talked yeah. to a real radio motherfucker. Right. Exactly. <laughs> that knows a lot about wrestling. That's right. So, Bubba, guess what? He tells me, no, Vince, I want you to write TV. He takes Bischoff out of the equation. Oh. Guess what the next show is? Bash of the Beach. Bingo. And that's where that's where that's why we're speaking today because I unear I unearthed we're we're looking at some of my old shit and I I see Hogan calls day after Bash of the Beach we, I have an I have twenty five thirty thousand I probably have six or seven thousand pieces of Hogan calling the show because he would call oh, the show sure. God, every yeah. fucking yeah. day if 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 Linda you know fucking his period was a little heavy he would call the fucking show <laughs> <laughs> if if Brooke needed promoted uh, on VH1 uh, to, to for her new her new single he called the show beg borrowed and steal <laughs> if I got a brand new suburban from the Chevy dealership he called the show and would get one using my fucking rub you don't understand in tampa man he was he was using my rub to get all kinds of shit that's why he liked me so much because i was so over in tampa in florida oh, were, that he yep, would and he's a fucking worker you know that yeah. so he would use my rub so i'm looking at some of my old Hogan shit that we might be start re re repurposing as shorts and stuff. And I see Hogan that's titled Hogan Calls Day After Bash of the Beach. And I know that you've heard the call. I mean, I think you've heard it now. Have you not? I have not heard it. Oh, God, I, I, you got to listen. I read the transcript, but I did not hear it. Oh, my God. He fucking walks right on through. Uh, here's a couple little, here's just a couple little pieces. Here, here's his, just, and, I, and these are like 30, I've only, I've really cut them down because, you know, Hogan's super long form. Here's, here's his brief description as to uh, what happened. Let me see if you can hear. Can, on the apron, you know. Can you hear that? No, uh-uh. Okay. 
Russo's out there, and he's got the belt. And he's Can you hear that or no? I really can't Shit, hear it. We no. can't. I can't. Valumi, I can't. Is that it. one little button you always got to push? I, I, I have all my oh. buttons pushed. God damn it! Hold on, let me see. Russo's out there, and he's got the belt, and he's leaning on on the apron. So I'm gonna. I'll go ahead and tell you what he's saying. Russo's out there, and he's got the belt leaning on the apron. That's what he says. You know. He said, okay, no big deal. I figured he's. I said, okay, no big deal. Just being a prizic. He said, I figured he's just being a prizic. That's what. That's just what he's saying. If you can hear this. Jarrett comes out to the ring, and he walks all the way back. So I think he's working. I think, yeah, all right, brother. And the son of a bitch gets in the ring and lays down. So he said, he said uh, Jared comes out, and he's walking around. I think he's getting the uh, crowd riled up, and he just comes in the middle and lays down. You had no idea what's coming. Russo looks at me. He climbs up in the apron and looks at me, and he goes, F*** you, Hogan. He said, he said, Russo comes up to me and looks at me and says, fuck you, Hogan. That's what he said you said. You're- he throws the belt at me. And, I would, and, he, and then you flip the belt out at him. Look down at Jared in the middle of the ring. I go, is this a rib? And he said, I then looked down at Jared in the middle of the ring, and I said, is this a rib? I said, why are you doing this, Jeff? Why are you doing this, Jeff? And Jeff goes, you've always told me, just do what I have to do. Uh, Jeff, Jared then said, you always told me, I just do what I got to do. Only 12 more seconds left. I just put my foot on his shoulder. <laughs> I, I just put my foot on my sh- on his shoulder. Counting him out, I took the belt, and I walked back. And I, I, took the wh- I took the belt, and I walked back. I said, F him. F him. I said, where is he at? I came through the back. I said, where is Russo at? I came through the back, and I said, where is Russo at? That's what he said happened. Okay. He, 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 here's the question. God, I this wish is, I wish Vince could hear this. Don't yes, you, Lummy? Yes. You fuckers. Uh, th- here's the question, oh, Bubba. This, this is the question. This is the honest to God question. It really is very important to know how long after Bash at the Beach he made those comments. Because, bro, it's hold it's on. You ready? Two- you ready for this? Yeah, go ahead. Less yeah. than ten hours. Then he's working. He he he's he's going with the storyline. He's he's one thousand percent working. Are you Vince? I know, but I and I'm and listen. I love you to death. I have you on every fucking day if I could. Yeah. I, yeah. And I have no alliance to Hogan. None. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. I. I I think I think he's shooting. No, he's wor- He's working. He knew everything, B- Bubba. He knew everything. So when you're he, so he so if you listen to I you got to go to my YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, we're sending you the link you because you've got a man. He fucking sold it. Yeah. It was like thirty five yeah. minutes. But he said yeah. that you guys were back there. You 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 come up with this angle, and then he asks you, "Where are we going with this down the road?" Bubba, you want me to lay this whole thing out for you? No, I'm just telling you what he said, buddy. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. just telling you what he said. So then, yeah. he, and then he, th- this is what he says, and then yeah. I'm like, uh, since v- Vince, when I asked Vince, "Where are we going with this?" which I'm assuming means where, what are we coming back with? If I if yeah. I if I lose the strap tonight, what are we doing? You know, like what's the long term plans here? Which that's that's a legitimate question that anybody yeah. would yeah. ask, you yeah. know. Yeah. And that's as a writer, you and when you're taking the strap off somebody, you got to kind of know where you're going with it, you know. Well, he didn't have he didn't have the strap, right? Or the you're going to put the strap on somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so he said on the air uh, that you couldn't tell him. In that you actually said, I have been racking my brain. I don't know do, what to do with your character. And and so at that point, he called Brad Siegel uh, and got Brad Siegel on the phone and I think put you on the phone with Siegel and emphasized that he had creative control and it fucked your whole world up because you had to no, rewrite I, the show. Can I lay everything out for oh, you? Oh, I, lo- I would love because, for you Bubba, to. First of all, you got to understand something. And by the way, I, I'm the only person in the world that has this uh, this audio yeah. from him. And so when you get a chance, Vince, here's what I want you to do. When, when yeah. you get a chance in the next week or two, listen to it, and then let's do another show of yes, you, of, 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 of you having listened to it and breaking yeah. it really the fuck down. Yeah. Now, Bubba, when I lay this out for you, I have told this story from the day that it happened. Now, I have not changed one thing and i think when i lay out the entire story to you it will make all the sense in the world to you because this is how it went down okay here's the deal i'm i'm writing bash at the beach right okay which is in daytona Hogan's- beach hogan was driving over with nick that's another thing he was so mad at is that you jobbed him out in front of nick yeah um i'm writing the show and i know hogan's got creative control 
So I've got to write Hogan's part in the show. At that point, I send it to Johnny Ace. Yep, Johnny Laurinaitis. Johnny Laurinaitis. He's got to contact Hogan to see if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay. Nice, uh, nice, nice bear on your on your on your forearm there. Love it. I oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, that's blue. Yeah, blue. yeah, there you go. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking so, right at Blue. I was looking yeah. right at Blue's ass for a yeah, second. And and, uh, and Eric Bischoff ain't walking around with no Blue. The no, bear no, I don't know. He, I don't know that he could back that up. To be honest with you. Anyway, All right, go ahead. So, so the you send it don't... to Laronitis. Laronitis gives you the yippee o or the yippee no. Yeah, thumbs down. This ain't working for me. I got to this ain't working so for what, me. But what, but what was the initial right? What was I, the? I, I can't remember the specific. <laughs> but it was it I, was probably Hogan. Remember... Lose, it was probably Hogan. Go. Uh, you know, was it him doing one clean? No, it, no, no, not at all. But it was not Hogan winning the title, right? But it wasn't it was him. Not, it wasn't him doing one clean, though. No, absolutely not. You, absolutely ne- not. in fact, you wouldn't fuck as a writer. You would never do that to him because no, you would fucking know not. that you get fucked. Yeah, absolutely not. So, okay, I got to write version two. So I sit down and I write version two, and literally, Bubba, I have Hulk killing everybody. Jarrett Steiner. He loses his mind. He lays everybody out, but he doesn't leave with the title. But okay. I made him look like King Kong. But you fucking put him over like a million bucks. He just like doesn't got the strap. Bucks. He doesn't got the strap. Yes. So he's not so, getting so he's not getting job. Not he's getting, not he's, yeah, no, he's King Kong, bro. Right. He, I couldn't have written the character any stronger. Right. Send it to Laurenitis. Laurenitis sends it to Hulk. This is probably the, the Friday before. Right. And I think Laronitis lived in Palm Harbor here at the time, and so Maybe. you know, may could even could he even have met Terry at at, at Terry's place? Yeah. Second second version, thumbs up, thumbs up, and that's Go with him it. cleaning house, fucking yes. you know, hulking up, looking good. Just the only technicality is no strap. Yeah, exactly. Boom. Because and let me tell you why. Because at the creative meeting, unanimously. <laughs> We all decided that the belt was going on Booker T. Yeah, I heard that, that I, the Booker one, that that's where you wanted the strap and that unanimously yes. people had agreed unanimously. Booker yes. was the next guy for the strap. Yes, yes. So, Bubba, this is what I found out during my deposition that I did not know. Okay? The, the, now, this, mind this, you, this, now, mind you, now, mind you, this is when you're, when you're being deposed, it's a sworn deposition, so yes. you can't perjure yourself. yes. And you and, you, and this, you got, and if you perjure yourself, you're fucking a company and you could lose your yeah. payday. So I just want so, people to know that. So I find this out during deposition. I'm like, you got to be effing me. So Friday afternoon, it's a thumbs up. Sometime after the office closes. Now, remember, bro, this is Friday. Right. Bash at the beach is Sunday. We're, we're all going out right. of town. We're all going to town. Right. After 5 p.m. on Friday, business is done, Right. What do the, what do they do, bro? Uh, can I tell? Hold it, on, before you tell me, can I ahead. can I predict? Go ahead. Okay, at five oh four, they are five twenty six. They fax, uh, fucking a, a fax a no go, fucking yes! creative control kicker. Yes. Uh, and let me tell you, who, who the fuck was this guy that handed all of his stuff out I, of I L.A.? What a lawyer, though. Oh, that guy oh, was. Oh, that was, fucking oh. guy. Oh, that guy. That motherfucking that guy. guy. Oh, so at fa- after guy. hours, so this yes! fax machine's waiting yes! on the machine after fucking <laughs> yes! Atlanta. Ted Turner Productions is closed. Yes. And that is the notice of of thumbs down, Willie. Thumbs down is saying You don't for know. People. Brad Siegel doesn't know. And you're, right. you, you go to the building, you know, Laronitis does. It no, you right. go. No. I go to I go to the building. I think everything's hunky dory, right? Right. You think okay, we're King Konging. We're fucking. You're gonna clean house. You be right. fucking yo. Straps yes. gonna go to Booker on a technicality, Willie. And we're fucking. We're home free. I got yes. a thumbs up. I'm gonna meet with Hogan here, and everything's gonna be great. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, bro. I go to the building. I'm doing my job. And again, you found on, out that information of the time of the facts in the at- deposition. Right, I, bro. I found that out months later. Right, months later. So, bro, I go to Bash at the Beach. I think everything's hunky dory. Okay. I'm met by Eric Bischoff. Okay, Hogan's in his trailer. Bischoff says to me, Vince. You got to go in there and talk to Hulk 
because he's he's using his creative control and he's not going to do what was written. So Bubba, I'm like, wait a minute, bro. He agreed on this on Friday. It, it went through Laurinaitis. It went through the proper channels. He agreed to all this on Friday. And Bischoff looks at me and says, he's not doing it. Okay? So now think about the position I'm in, Bubba. Two hours before the show, now I got to go in Hogan's trailer, and it's me, Hogan, and Bischoff, bro. Okay, like, th- both of them hates my, hate my guts. I got to produce this show and make sure this and, show And happens. you're probably what? Maybe an hour and a half from fucking showtime? Yes, if, absolutely. If? Absolutely, yes. So, when I go in the in the trailer, Bischoff and Hogan tell me, first of all, we we called Hold on, Bill Apgar. Bill Apgar. <laughs> that was his personal. I just it just came to my that mind. Was a, that was a lawyer. That was the yeah. big sling and dick out of LA that oh, fucking yeah, yeah that Bill Apgar. Brutal. Yeah, yeah. Brutal, I, I, I didn't bro. mean to interrupt you. I'm so sorry, That's Vince. Okay. That's so okay. you're going in there, you're going into a hornet's nest. Exactly. You got a double exactly. no Willie. You got yeah. yeah so yeah, the first thing they tell me is, well, we already called Brad Siegel and he was okay with all of this. Okay. So now they're now they're pitching their story to me. Now you mean they're pitching their story or their potential finish? Uh, what what, what we're gonna do that day? Okay. That, the finish. Right. What we're gonna do? So, bro, of course, w- within the first sixty seconds, what am I hearing? Hogan's winning the belt. Right. First of and all, I'm saying, I just want to let you know, brother, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna go ahead and get the strap tonight. I just want to let you know. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, I'm saying to myself, bro, you're not winning the belt. No, no matter what happens, Booker is leaving this arena with the belt. That's what I'm saying to myself. But you not, but you didn't say that for out loud. No, because here's here's what happens now, Bubba. Now, when I understand his story is to win the belt, he starts. He starts laying out the story to me. Bro, while he's laying out the story, I'm not even listening because now on my feet, while he's laying out the story, I got to come up with plan B, something I could sell him that he's going to be okay with, but he's not going to win the title. And we're not talking about third match in, fucking dark match, Willie. We're talking about the main event. I mean, we're, yes. t- we're talking about, you know, something that you probably got, what, 24 minutes at least involved in? Like, it's, yes. it's at least that long? Yes. So, Bubba, here's where he opened the door for me. In in in, in his creative, he said these Again, words. now, this is the shoot that really did happen. This is 1,000 on my, my children, my wife, my 92-year-old dad. And blue on your arm. Yes, and blue. So... <laughs> Here's what he said that my, my, my mind went like this. He said to me, if this were a shoot, brother, this is how it would go down. Okay. That, that, boom. I looked at him and I said, no, Hulk. If this were a shoot, this is how it would go down. I said, you would show up at the arena tonight. Call me in your in your in your trailer. Refuse to do the job for Jeff Jarrett. I would then go to Jeff Jarrett and say, "Bro, Hogan's not going to job for you." And I would say to Jarrett, "F Hogan, bro. Lay down in the middle of the ring. F him, bro. Lay down in the middle of the ring." So you okay? laid out. The yeah, yeah. the fucking shoot. If we're yeah. if we're shooting here, yes, I uh, bro, I I don't know what else to, bro. I wrote a book, but you had to, some... but but you told him those words. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, so this so, was not a swerve to him at no, all. This no, wasn't. So, this wasn't a. You know, he made it sound like no, when he went out to the fucking when he went out there, this no. was completely a curveball finish. That's why I'm saying he was working, bro. Because I don't want to call the guy a liar. I'm right. saying he was working. Right. Well, I, okay? I, I, God damn, I got to tell you, he's, I mean. 
So, bro. Well, you I know, say, I guess I, I guess it proved that he was working by the outcome of the lawsuit. It got thrown out. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I yes. mean, that validates your. Hold on, it being dismissed. It got dismissed. It didn't. It, 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 now, it got I, dismissed twice. It got dismissed twice. twice. Only validates that your side of the story is the one the court believed. And not not to mention, if you go read the affidavit, <laughs> B- B- Bischoff and Hogan weren't even on the same page. My, my my story never changed. Their stories actually contradict if you go and read them. It's not a wonder they didn't subpoena my, they probably didn't know about my tape. If they had known about my tape, you don't think that they would have used that as evidence? Oh, my God, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess. So here's what I say. So I would tell Jared to lay down. You would put your foot foot on Jared, whatever you're going to do. Now, at that point, you are so freaking pissed at Vince Russo that you and Eric leave the building in a huff. And I said, this is why they had to leave, Bubba. They had to leave because I had to go back to the ring. And shoot on them. And shoot on them and cut a promo to make the Jarrett and Booker match happen. I had to make sense out of it all. Well, you had you had to you had to get the heat on the promo in order to validate what Hogan just did. Yes, and it doesn't I had make to... sense for you to come out there and go, whoa, whoa, you know, it looks like this ain't working out so swell. You know, it looks like Hogan might be a little bit mad. We weren't prepared for this. No, right. you got to come out there and call him a piece of shit. He's exactly what's wrong with the business. Yes, I mean, in order, and, and in I order said... to back, in order to back what just happened up. Yeah, I, yeah, and what I said was, Hulk. I said you and Eric got to be gone because if I cut that promo in the ring, you got to come out and kill me. Right, so but if you you're in your limo here, and gone, you can't be here. Right? right, you can't be here when I cut this promo. Right. So here's what I said, Bubba. I said, I said you and Eric leave in a huff. I'm gonna go back to the ring, and here's what I said. I am gonna cut a scathing promo on you, bro. The reason, why, the reason why I said that, Bubba, was. So I he knew he heard. knew because because one of the things that he said to me was that his son was exposed to you know the shit that you were saying and which really really embarrassed him and his son asked why would he say those things about you dad which which is not truthful because you he you told him you were gonna cut a scathing I mean scathing you can't cut promo. a promo and be nice like if you're if it's if the guy did what he did. You got to come, you got to just fucking make it way over the top in order for right. people to believe it. And I Bubba, mean, and let's, the, and let's be honest, the the business believed it. Like, I mean, well, right? I mean, me, to the point where it's a, con- it's, it's, it's as controversial as the Montreal screw job. Like, bro, it's a, let me, right? Yeah. Let me tell you what happened. So I, I said to him, I'm going to cut a scathing promo on you. I didn't say what the promo was going to be because, bro, I never knew what I was going to say well, in no. the ring. I always got in the moment. And, I, and, I, and, I, and let's I, be I, honest, it was a it was kind of a last second promo put right. together deal anyway, right? Right, right. So I said, I will go, I will go, and then I'm gonna go in the ring and I'm gonna cut a scathing promo on you. I'm gonna say your belt doesn't mean shit. The real championship match is gonna take place tonight between Jeff Jarrett, Booker T of what Booker and Booker goes over. Now, bro, now you know that look. You know the look when Hulk's eyes get really wide. Right. He's excited about something. He likes something. So his eyes get really wide, and he goes, yeah, brother, I like that. Then uh, uh, Booker will have the belt, and I have the belt, and we can do something between yeah, me and which Booker. Ma- and, that, and that would make sense. Now you right. got two belts. Which one of you motherfuckers are going to be the real strap holder? And that that writes itself, right? Yes. Yeah, so I said to him, bro, because because Bubba, that's the only know, thing. That's the only thing you can come back with, really, on that job. Right. Right now, Bubba, you got to understand, bro. With 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 thirty minutes from showtime right. at this point. So I said to him, I said, Hulk. I, I, you know, I can't think about that right now because I've got to go make start this the show. happen. I said, bro, as soon as I get back from television, I will call you and we'll discuss where we go from here. Right. That's what I said. Right. Okay. So now, bro, the thing lays, the, the thing happens 
exactly like we laid well, it out. Well, and the heat, there's the heat, and there's the fucking politicking, and there's the controversial deal, and then the yeah. whole big thing is, is it a work or a shoot? Even yes. the boys. I, I, Kevin Nash, I talked to Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash was like, bro, I don't know what it was because I would, I, I had already worked, and I would go, I was home. I was, you know, because he lives in Daytona. <laughs> he was like, bro, I'd already put my fucking eight, 18 minutes in, and I was out to fuck the door. <laughs> Bro, you want to hear something interesting? You'll really love this. Like, I, I wanted this to appear real so badly. Bro, I didn't smarten Jeff up. Really? Jeff was not. Jeff literally thought Hogan did not. Jeff was not. Because I wanted to get Jeff's real emotion. And, bro, I never saw oh, and, Jeff and, and, Jarrett and, and, so hot and in my it life. Was, it was so, and he was so uncomfortable, and it yes. was so believable. Yes. And, I he mean, Jeff sat, there, Jeff sat there like he was disrespecting yes. Hogan. And Hogan, I mean, listen, it's too bad Hogan lied about it because if Hogan, I mean, Hogan sold his ass off. He, I mean, he pulled it off brilliantly. I mean, it right? Was, it, it, it played out exactly I mean, look like at it. 23 fucking it. years later, we're talking about it. Well, now, right? he, he, now, he, now, let me tell you what happened, bro. And, and it, it will all make sense to you, especially since you know Hogan. It will all make well, sense and to you. And especially I was the only guy to speak to him the day after right. about the entire. Let me do, they, they took my screen away. I wanted to play that one thing when, when he said that where, where Russo messed up on. Oh, okay. What, where Russo missed the opportunity. They took it, they took it away. I was going to have to tell Russo what he said, but uh, nonetheless, I will. But anyway, go on, Russo. Okay, so, bro, what works out perfectly. He leaves the building. Jared and Booker have the match. Booker wins the title. We're exactly where we're supposed to be, 1,000%. And everybody's freaked the fuck out, which is exactly what pro wrestling's supposed to be. Okay, exactly. So, bro, I wake up the next morning. Monday morning. And all I'm hearing and reading is Russo finally put Hogan in his place. Russo said to Hogan what somebody should have said a long time ago. Bro, they bought it hook, line, and sinker. And, bro, I'm knowing in my head, bro, if Hulk is reading this shit and people are believing it, bro, he's going to think that people think I got one over on him. Because he's so I fucking narcissistic. I yes, and I know it's it's gonna piss him off. Meanwhile, he should have said, "Fuck! Look at all this heat, and now I can now I got a fucking legitimate reason why not legitimate, but a working reason why to hate Russo, and I can have two bad guys. I'll go I'll, Booker and I will do a program, but I'll fucking lay Russo out. Maybe Russo will come to the ring. I'll maybe I'll get color because I don't think you guys outload. I think you guys still had color back then, didn't you? Could you? Yeah, guys, we yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fucking get Russo some color. Fuck his world up because he's a no good motherfucker. But instead, his ego took over. He started reading the lines and started and and, and, he, and he got Eric Bisch, Bischoff itis, which is marking. I'm mark. I'm fucking marking out to myself. And he let the fucking marks work him into a shoot. Period. And he, okay, so but but he he was the icing on the cake, Bubba. And th this is where I have to because take he was on my phone ten yeah. hours later, hard yep. selling. Th yeah. th the other deal. This is this is the icing on the cake, and this is where I do have to take responsibility. But I got to tell you, I I I don't think I could have done it differently. You tell me if I did the wrong thing. So, bro, I get back to the office Tuesday. Bro, I have every intention in the world of calling Hulk. Right. Every intention in the world because okay, bro, where are we going from here? Let's let let's talk about and this. And we got real I'm, and we got real heat. <clears throat> yes, and when I told them I'm going to call you after TV, I had every intention in the world. Yeah. So Bubba, I get I get to the office, Siegel calls me in his office. Vince, what happened on Sunday? I lay out the entire scenario to, to Siegel, just like I did to you. Right. Brad Siegel goes to me, how did you leave it with Hulk? And I said, Brad, I'm supposed to call him today so we could talk about the creative going forward. Where we're going with it. Brad Siegel said to me, bro, my right hand to God, and I am a Christian man. Yeah, yeah look, you think I'm lying right here on my 
on my desk, if you could see this or not here, experiencing God right here on my desk. He's a Christian man, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. and he's also Vince Russo, <laughs> and he went Bra to Indiana State Evansville. How can you, you fucking, how can this guy go wrong? <laughs> Brad Siegel said to me, and I quote, Vince, you cannot call Hulk because I can't afford to put him on the show. So Vince so, is Vin, hold on. So Hogan's fucking it just I've seen the numbers, I've seen the deal. They need they were trying to get him off TV because it was 675 an appearance. Plus, I don't even know any of oh, that. I Whatever. Do. I, I do. I just know, bro. I got the head of the network saying, "Bro, you can't call him because I can't afford to put him on television." Right. So, bro, I didn't did call him. Did you know him. did you know that he made Twenty thousand no. dollars. Hold on, I know this for. Listen, yeah, he made yeah. twenty thousand dollars just to walk out to the ring, at wearing an NWO shirt. Yeah. He got he got twenty five or fifty percent of the gate. He got. I mean, you, you don't under, you don't understand. He was making. He was make. He was averaging about ten to twelve million a year with Turner. Wow. Yeah, and so I can see where Siegel would be like, listen, if we we're kind of trying to wind this, this this might be our window out, and and, and again, I'm speculating with you right. at this point. You know, we're right. not we're just well, I guess I guess I guess history would say that we're not speculating because Hogan sued Turner and lost and got some sort of settlement, but lost nonetheless the the this this particular argument. Right. And so, well, well, so, bro, now you could see, you could see this was a Molotov. I mean, it's, Molotov it's like almost cocktail. Siegel kind of used you to maybe. get to get out. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever said this, and you've and you've ever maybe come to this come to this conclusion. But it's like, okay, Hogan is costing us more. I mean, we're losing money on the Hogan deal. We cannot afford. I mean, I think Kev was making like three million. I think you know some of the bigger top guys were in that area, but you know. It wasn't nothing too exorbitant. Everybody was, I mean, Turner paid way more than he should have for everybody. But H Hogan had, Hogan had plus, 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 plus two. Plus, Hogan got, he, P Hogan got $250 a day per diem. Just add uh, injury to insult. Just so the motherfucker could eat his Big that, Mac. That, so, yeah, that is I almost right. think, I almost think that, that, that Turner got together. Siegel was like, listen, we can't fucking pay this guy $12 million. The numbers are going down. Um, he's he, Hogan's marking out to himself that that Russo disrespected him. Here comes the lawsuit. We're going to win this lawsuit and we can settle for a third. I think he got three or four. And this is just my opinion. I think he got three or four on the settlement, but it's far less than 12. And Russo is kind of our um, who was the guy that shot Kennedy? Um, <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald. He's he, he's kind of our Russo's kind of our Lee Harvey Oswald. He can take the big guy out, and, and you know nobody's and 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 that's kind of what happened because but Hogan now, I mean, now bro now when because you look because if pieces, you think about it, if you come back with that hot angle, that's going to keep Hogan on TV. It's yeah, going to keep him on the pay per views, absolutely, and it's and and, and it's going to keep continue his contract and and and, and his paydays yeah. because that's a hot that actually could have maybe reinvented the dullness that he had created. He was right. he was down at that point. He'd already left NWO, you know. He was he was fucking winding it down, cashing those checks. Yeah. Now, if you look at look, look at the Molotov cocktail, I, I look at these two things. You know, number one, everybody's buying into this, and he's reading and hearing it all. Yeah. And it re it really looked like Russo got over him. Now, combine that with, I told him I was going to call him, and I didn't. Call him, but upon instruction. Upon upon instruct, but he he didn't know that. I to know him, that. I just didn't call. Well, fuck so that. Now, I mean, that's bro, not the truth, though. The truth is, it's upon instruction. Right, upon instruction. So, but bro, when you put those things together, now he's gonna sue me for defamation of character. Which, by the way, he, is he I've, I've been sued by four times and won all four of them. It's such a hard plateau to 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 prove. Let alone if you're in the pro wrestling business. How do you defame well, yeah, somebody in a fake business?
the judge <laughs> the judge said let me the judge said let me get this straight you're on a wrestling pay-per-view you're in a wrestling ring He's referring to you by your wrestling name. Right. He's not calling you so Terry. You're not saying Terry Bolea, you're a piece of shit. Once the, the judge threw it out. Bro, they appealed. Oh, I know and they the, did. The I... second judge came back and said, let me get this straight. You were in a wrestling r- ring on a wrestling show, and he referred to you as your wrestling name. He threw it out, and then that was the end. So we're the only. Uh, go ahead, Luke. How, how much? How much do you think Bischoff was in his ear? Because it looks like oh, fuck he it. was well, not happy right with now. Hey, yeah. Bischoff was in his. Bischoff was the biggest shit stirrer of all. I mean, you know, because yeah. because it was been at that point. There, think Bischoff is my in my mind, and you can let me know what you think about this, Vince. But at this point, Bischoff is like, yeah, we got fucking Russo, we got him. I can really fuck his world up. We'll get him in a lawsuit. Fucking WCW don't want to fucking be in a lawsuit, and he's a no good motherfucker. And they just fucked the golden goose. What they didn't realize is that Turner was sick of paying this money, and that Russo's hot shot angle actually kept. See, it all makes sense. I didn't even know any of this. Shit, Vince, until yep. you talk to me, but yep. your angle would have fucking hot shot him on TV. I mean, right? Would have been great. Yep. I mean, it, it, yep. it, it, it's there's you got at least you got at least fucking two pay per views on this shit. Oh yeah, you could have played that out for another year, bro. Yeah, I mean, but just just at, at the minimum, you got three yeah. three four months on this deal where you know he's wrestling, he, he's working Booker, and you know he's getting ready to go over. You come in, do a fuck job on him. You know, you're always that asshole that's causing him problems. He can't get to you. Finally, when he gets to you, he fucks you all up, and then somebody saves, maybe Steiner, one of your boys saves you. I mean, there's it. It would really almost reinvent. Like, because everything was dead at that time. Everything. I mean, even Nash was saying, man, I did my fucking minutes and left. Like nobody was yeah. hanging out. The, the 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 ship had sailed with regards to the, you know, everything had ran its course, and and it's it's it really makes. I think this is the first time this has really been broke down in this yeah. manner. But I I do believe I gotta say something, bro. To 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 defend Hulk. I believe, bro, that clip that you are playing is is ten hours after whatever it is. He one hundred percent is working the angle. I I I, I unless have to unless that. Bischoff drove home with him for the five hours it takes to get to Daytona, and they fucking concocted this story so they could lawsuit Willie on the backside because you know, listen. If there's one thing, who's the most litigious person you know? Hulk Hogan is one of the most litigious. Pre- I mean, he sued his back doctor 10 times. He sued. I mean, he's a litigious guy. He knew. the, And he's also one of the smartest minds in wrestling. He fucking Absolutely. knows when his yep. star is not shining. He would always be working another angle. You know, when he was wrapping it up with Vince, he was working the Dixie angle. You know, he was oh, And then when he was wrapping it up with uh, with Vince, uh, when he was trying to cut a deal with Dixie the first time, he was telling her that Fox was going to give him like $250 million to start his own deal when it really didn't, it wasn't really... It, it it was all you know all smoke and mirrors. So yeah. he knew that you know he his his shit his shit was getting a little old, and he thought he could go get a quick payday, you know, a get get a half to three quarters of his deal and not have to work anymore. Hang you out, Bischoff, and and they're doing two things. One, he's getting a quick payday, but two, Bischoff's fucking you. Oh, Bill. Uh, so uh, he, I don't think. Uh... Vince read this because the transcripts kind of cut it off. But toward the end, you're right, Bubba. He said that him and uh, Bischoff were driving back, and they didn't know about his promo, which <laughs> there then you go. he got I just upset hit it. about Vince, it. Vince, I just hit it. Then he got upset. Ridiculous. And then <laughs> that's when Hogan came in with what Vince should have done. Yeah, I wish I, I – so here I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – see, I don't think Vince can hear this, but I'll, I'll – it's 54 seconds. I'll, uh, I'll tell Vince what Hogan said. So here's what Hogan said. Hold on here. I started thinking about last night, you know. I started thinking about last night. Oh, I listened to about half of Russo's interview before I got. I listened to about half of Russo's interview. Before I got out of the building. Before, yeah. I got out of, before I got out of the building. So he said he listened to half of your interview before he got he out of the building. Gone. They, well, I, 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 I assume they were gone because that was the plan. Right, hold on. And he should have went out there and told the people, oh, my God, I'm sorry. He should have gone out there and told the people, oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm going to do the best I can to fix it. 
I'm going to do the best that I can to fix it. I believe in the young wrestlers. I just want. I believe in the young wrestlers. Get rid of the old guys and have a fresh start. And I just want to get rid of the old guys and have a fresh start. Humble. Instead, he goes out there and he goes, that piece of shizit. Instead, he goes out there and says, that piece of shizit. We'll never wrestle in the WCW. That we'll never wrestle in the WCW. Idiot went out there and told the people. That idiot went out there and told the people. That he was responsible for me and Jared not having a match. He was responsible for me and Jared not having a match. What an idiot. What an idiot. Instead of putting the heat on me. Instead of putting the heat on me. He put the heat on himself. He put the heat on himself. That's an idiot that wants to see himself on television. He is a very stupid man. He's, he is a very stupid man. There, that's a problem with WCW, Terry, is there is no psychology involved anymore. But just think about it. For but him, just think about it. To go out there and tell the people that he was responsible for. To go out there and tell the people that he is responsible. Jared laying down. That's why they got fizzed up, why the people get screwed. I mean, That's I'm, why the people got screwed. <laughs> So yeah. that is that screams of him and him and Russo. I'm sorry, him and uh, Bischoff. Six, it's about four and a half hours to Daytona from Tampa, concocting this thing, saying, "Listen, man, Terry, you know, I don't know how many miles you got left. I don't know how many more, how, how much longer you can keep milking fucking Turner into paying your, you know. I mean, he got six seventy five walking in money." Plus fifty percent of the gate, plus a hundred percent of uh, NWO merchandise. Plus, I mean, you'd want, I've seen his contract. Uh, Kevin Kevin Nash on his podcast about I think maybe mm, three or four months ago, they got a copy of Hogan's contract and broke it down. And Nash was like, "Oh my God, what a rib!" Like it is un unbelievable. And then he got like it was six hundred and ninety five thousand dollars guaranteed, or then they had these buy rate numbers. And if mm -hmm. those buy rate numbers were larger than six seventy five, uh, he would. And the buy rate like started at, at, at like one four, so like one four to one nine would you know. And then you only he only had to get like a three buy rate to make like a million two or something like that. And so. Yeah. He knew that he probably couldn't continue that shit going on. So him and Bischoff says, hey, let's just fucking act like we're the victims here. We'll file a lawsuit. Russo won't be, won't be able to survive this shit. And, I mean, why else would – I'm his best friend, and this is his – only opportunity to tell the world what happened, and he swore by it. Until this conversation, until this conversation, Vince, I always thought – that you did that that you that it went down the way he said it did is that you fucked him and that you didn't know but now it all makes sense i don't listen i know this that you are a fair guy and that you say it like it is and the bottom line is you knew you were hired on and you knew he had creative control at 1,000% yeah. and did not blame him at all for it. Right, and did not blame him at all and said, motherfucker, God bless you for having that kind of control, yes. kid. And I'm going to yes. have to ride accordingly yes. knowing that you can switch shit up. 1,000%. So, so I'm not, it's not a, she has got the bigger dick contest here. You obviously do, meaning him. I have to ride accordingly. So for you to come up and to be able to whip some shit up like this last minute that had legs, that had legs, yep. that what you did had legs. And that's why Brad Siegel got involved because he knew it had legs. And since it had legs and it was a good spot, it meant Terry was going to get that eight or 900,000 every time he showed up for TV and they couldn't pay it. Bro, can I ask you a very, very, very simple question? And, you know, bro, I, I do believe, you know, he was your best man yep. at your wedding. This is how close. I know how close. Yep. So I'm, I'm going to ask you a, yep. a simple question based on how well you know Hulk Hogan. Yes. If Hulk Hogan knew absolutely nothing about Jeff Jarrett laying down and, and we, we did that as a shoot, and I told Jeff, I'm out there with Jeff. And I said, Jeff, lay down. And we did that as a shoot. Would Hulk Hogan not be confronting either one of us in the back? 
Oh, fuck I yeah. Think, of course he would, bro. But he didn't because he had to leave the building. In order so to make the angle the work. In order to make yes. the angle work, you Are gotta you, you leave the building. Think, you don't think Hulk wouldn't have been waiting for us in the I've back? I've seen him wait for Vent before. Yes. Of course, I've he seen he him fucking go me. up to Vince and say, "Bro, that doesn't work for me." Yes, <laughs> I mean that—that's where the story falls apart. He would have been hunting us down, out for blood, right? But he left. He left because that was the plan. No, I mean, I listen. You took. I mean, I'm, I'm very close to this situation, and I have. I never ever. In fact, today, Vince, I was, I'm always going to be respectful for you because I, I like you. But for today, I was ready to argue with you. Yeah, great. I, know, yeah. I mean, I was ready to fucking say, Vince, you're full of shit, buddy. Right. Let's get to the truth here. Let's break this shit down. Here's my evidence. There's your evidence. And I was ready because I've been so hard sold on Terry's story and what he said. And I can't wait for you to listen to it because you will have a fucking ball with it. Well, I, I, you, I, you and I, I ought to do, bro, it, is I ought to get it to you. And you I, should I, I break. It you, you, you should break. I, I give you permission to use i give you permission to use it you should break it down for a show because i mean it's fucking it's solid but, but, but gold. He, he, he had to be working well he but, had to be working so at that he point. he did say in that clip that he said he was waiting for you but dillinger told yeah, him dillinger to get told out him. Of that's yeah. right i i, yeah. I read that yeah. Yeah. Dillinger dillinger told him to get out because he had his kids with him and the lawsuit wasn't worth it i mean i'm but bro so listen you understand i i was ready to engage you with, you know, we were going to probably agree to disagree about this being a work versus shoot. I was like saying, fucking Vin I was like, Vince, this is an absolute fucking shoot. This is the way you did. You went in there and you fucking buried him because, you know, you blah, blah, blah. And I was just, but I was going to be respectful about it. Right. You know, right, but right. I got to tell you, I believe you. I one after you lay it all out and you and you talk about the Brad Siegel you know uh, directive and you talk about and that led into a lawsuit. You're telling the truth, absolutely. And Bubba, yeah, and Bubba, that is why. Like, bro, people might find this hard to believe. Bro, I've got zero heat with Hulk. None. Like zero. Absolutely none. Reason being is, bro, this is the story we laid out. You you know it. I know it. Bishop knows it. And as I said, Bubba, I'm telling you, maybe you get somebody on your staff. The the depositions, all of our depositions are online. If you read Hogan's and Bischoff's, keep in mind the three of us are in the trailer. Right, right. When you read Bischoff and Hogan's depositions separately, Bro, they're not even telling the same story. You know what I'm you know what I'm most mad about is I'm most mad about it didn't get a play out because it yeah. would have been a really, really good angle. I'm bad at I'm mad at Turner that wanted to sever ties because of this exorbitant fucking contract that they this bad deal that they signed, which was a good deal when 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 they were killing, you know, when they had the numbers, but as the right. decline, it ended right. up being that deal ended up being worse and worse as the numbers went down and down in the house shows and the and, the, and this but I'm mad. I wish this would have been done during the heyday where this could have been played out because it would have changed both of your legacies. It would have been, oh, my God, Vince, do you know how good that would have been for you to fucking yeah. have real, I mean, real believable heat and Hogan's at, at the end of the day? And I know you do one clean. I know for a fact that at the end of the day, you would do one clean with juice in the middle to Hogan <laughs> at a pay-per-view if it made sense. I know you would. Yep. Yep. It would be an honor for I a guy do. like you to if 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 you let let's say you guys milk this thing out like the way it would go on him and Booker back and forth you're fucking hit you're doing fuck jobs you know all this kind of he can never catch you you can never you know bliss this and that he finally catches you lays you the fuck out that would have been great that would have been great don't you think yeah but Bubba I gotta tell you bro honestly at the end of the day. Because I I really take great pride in in integrity and being a man of my word. At the end of the day, regardless of of the orders of Brad Siegel, 
I did not live up to my word. Yeah, you know, I and told, I, I told them I was going to call them, bro, and I did not call them. You I got to take responsibility for that, bro. You probably should have called them on Monday. You know, that's probably, and you know what? I appreciate you manning the fuck up like that, but you, you did, at the time that you were ready to call him, you were told by your superior not because there was an ulterior motive that was even bigger than your gentlemanly ship, if that makes sense. But I sense. still told, I, man to man, I still told him I was going to call him. I know, but I mean, I get it. I get it, and I know you struggle with that. I do. I know I you do. struggle with that, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's kind of a tweener deal in the fact that you were told not to, and you were told not to by the person that's writing your paycheck. And it was a decent paycheck at the time, you know? So, and, it, and it was, you know, like I said, it was flat out. I can't afford to put him on TV. Right. No, no I know. Those were Siegel's exact words to me. And he never was on TV again. No. Hey, listen, if they wanted him to be on TV, they would have overrode you and said, okay, we're going to change this fucking angle real fast. We're going to have you baby face on the deal. Which you, I mean, you, if that's what they're calling for, you know, hey, I mean, they could have literally had you come out the next day, listen, I'm Vin, Vin, Vince Russo. I'm a solid New Yorker. I'm an emotional man. I love this business. You know, Hogan has, uh, he's earned his ability to have a creative control clause. He exercised that. It threw me a curveball. I didn't know what to do. I lost my mind like the solid fucking New Yorker that I am. And I apologize <laughs> to you. I really, I mean, that would have been a good angle too. And so yeah. Turner had a couple different ways they could go, have gone with it and kept it on TV. But the bottom line is they didn't want him on TV because it was too, it was a million dollars every night he worked. And and what else, Bubba, what are we missing here that we didn't even bring up? Bro, the whole controversy was he was dead set on winning that title because that would have gave him power. Right. That would have that, if he, that, if that he, keeps he, him that, on TV. That keeps yes, him on TV. That's that's why he, he was dead set on leaving that. He had an ulterior motive. You're right, because yes. if yes. you can't keep the guy with the strap off TV, you just can't. That's yeah. fucking wrestling 101. Exactly. Yes. So you got the strap. You're going to be every fucking where you're going to be on every pay-per-view. You're going to be on every Raw. You're going to be on a, the whole fucking nine yards. So he knew that if he could get, get the strap, then he's yes. got them in gold. He's got them handcuffed at least for a few more months. And, yes. and, and you're right. That's the that's kind of the underlying issue that that nobody really can understand in the yeah, fact because that, that's that's what this was all about we we all agreed unanimously booker was winning the belt hulk was dead set on winning the belt that that was the underline of the entire of the entire story and again with your angle your initial angle as you say which is him coming out you know after Laronitis, you know had agreed uh him coming out you know, a bunch of guys crash a ring. He fucking cleans house, beats Steiner's ass, beats fucking yep. x Pox, whoever. Jeff the, said, Jeff Jarrett's beats, ass. Beats yes. the janitor's ass, beats the yes. fucking caterer guy's ass. Yes. And <laughs> beats That's ass. what, bro, you laugh, but that was <laughs> what, bro, I swear to God, I remember, Bubba, you're laughing, but I swear to God, I remember everybody being stretchered out. Yeah. Like it was a war scene. Right. <laughs> like literally, the, the bro, ba- Steiner was being stretchered out. The guy that's running the fucking cameras, getting his ass kicked. <laughs> yes. The guy that's doing the riggins, yes. getting his ass kicked. The guy that yes. takes down the rings, getting his ass kicked. And, yes. the, and the only thing is the strap stays over here in the corner. It's vacated. Yes. And now we're coming back with a Jared versus fucking Booker high spot. Yes. And, you know, boom. And you, and you yes. can, and at that point, you can incorporate Terry could come back with, uh, you know, I got fucking screwed, you know, this and that. You, there's, there's three, I mean, there's all three angles. If Turner wanted him to come back, you could have him come back. All, one, Russo baby faces, says, I'm sorry, I'm a solid New Yorker, I'm a fucking nut job, I lost my cool. Boom, Terry comes back. Two, Terry takes the strap home, he's the champion, he comes back. Three, it goes down the way it went down, the way you called it, the fuck job, the big fuck, the 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 the, the Daytona fuck job, and <laughs> and he comes back, and you and two, you two and him have a hot shot angle, that requires him to come back. Four, corporate doesn't want him. Corporate doesn't want the other three. Every potential angle 
if they wanted him back on TV, but it cost them a million dollars right. every night. And uh, hold on, it cost him a million dollars. It cost him a private plane. It cost him, I mean, it cost them, you know, uh, buy rates and merch rates. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it didn't. And at that time, they were getting there. They were, I think, I think, I think Vince was beating them. I think Vince was, oh, beating, yeah. Yeah, Vince, no, definitely Vince was killing them. Time, no doubt. Oh, and, yeah. you know, and so. God, man, we broke this shit right on down today, do we not, brother? I mean, that's it, bro. That's why it's like, bro, I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to lie about. And no, hold on, and nothing it. to gain. Either. Nothing to gain. This is what was. I got no he with all. It, it sucked that he dragged me through that lawsuit. I'll, I'll be honest. But, but I'm, I'm not that kind of guy. I, I never had a lawsuit filed against me in my life. I've had and four. I, I got dragged through <laughs> I've all. Had, I've had four. <laughs> yeah, well, not, you know, bro, I got dragged through all. Oh, they're that the worst. Dep- sitting through depositions are yeah, the I fucking know, man. worst. Right. I mean, they try to catch you lying on your name. I mean, they ask you, like, <laughs> okay, are you sure it's not Vincent Russo or is it Vince Russo or is it Vinny Key Russo or is it Vinny Russo yeah. with a fucking hyphen or what? You lying son of a bitch, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Shoot style. Name me your Mount Rushmore of wrestling. Oh, man. Like, bro, and, is... now I know, bro. I mean, shoot style. And I'm talking about in, incorporating ability to work, ability to draw, and ability to get along with as a writer. Shoot style. Well, see, uh, ability to get along with as a writer changes everything. Well, no, not really, because that's your job. I mean, that's your you can't, because if if you know, I guess you can look at it one of two ways: one as a one as a writer, and two as a watch a consumer. You know, or what do you want me to? What do you want me to? Call, I want which you one? writer because that's that's see a lot of people can give me that answer as a consumer. Okay, Very, I'll give you as a only only a handful of people can give me that answer as a writer. Am I Beautiful. right? Am I right? Yes, okay. yes. And, and, and in, ca- one, in case you don't know, Mount Rushmore has four people on it. <laughs> Yeah, number one, without a shadow of a doubt, without what was a joy. If 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 everybody was like him, I'd still be in the wrestling business. Was a joy. Number one, Kurt Angle. Oh, absolutely! Fuck, I cannot agree number with one. you more. Not and, even close. And he could shoot style, kick your ass. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Number two, The Rock. Oh, because yeah. bro. We, we just told this whole story about Hulk and, you know, that doesn't work for me, brother. Okay, bro. I would always send rock the scripts before TV. Now, if rock wanted to make a change, this is how rock would do it. Vince, I, I got the script, read the script, bro. Love the script, bro. You are amazing. This is, this is unbelievable. This is the greatest. But if we tweak this one little thing at like a gentleman, like a gentleman, right. and, and, and he, he, he knew he was smart enough to know, bro, I'm not going to piss off the writer. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say, put the, a, put, the right, put the writer over, put the writer and, over, and then I'm going to make my, my small little change. That's it. And, and, my, and, and the writer is going to come back and say, man, that is not a problem at all, buddy. <laughs> right. And 100% we're going to make the change and it's going to be better. Right. 1,000%. Right. And he, probably he, chances he, are Rock's got a great mind. His fucking father was amazing. You know, Rock probably, his changes probably made sense too. Probably. Yeah. 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 All so right. that that would be That's two. number two. Number three, I would have to say would be Dustin just because there were no limitations. What, what, and, what, and he what, just sold the gimmick so good, right? I yeah, mean, just, yeah. just you know, the and, and and I gotta think that he was easy to work with. I mean, you know, oh Rome. my god, oh my god, I I don't think Dustin ever, I I don't think he ever said no once or ever felt uncomfortable once. You know, I gotta call him up, do an interview with him one of these days. He, I yeah, had him in the yeah. show a few times, and he was always just so good. Yeah, him and Cody, he, he, uh, yeah, he, him, he, he we was, had him and Cody in one time, yeah. Yeah, he right, was so number three. Number three is Dustin. Who's your fourth? And I know this. You probably got about three guys to pick one slot, bro. I'm gonna say number four, and this was really a love hate relationship. Uh, when we worked well together, it was fantastic. And I mean, bro, this is probably the only wrestler that threatened to beat me up. 
threatened to beat me up. So th- th- it was really love hate. It was really love hate. But I'm going to put them on there because I say, from my professional opinion of having worked with everybody, he was the best. And when I say he was the best, bro, I mean, when you look at every category of what it takes to be a professional wrestler, every category, not the easiest person in the world to work with because he was at a bad place at the time. And I understand that. But I I, I, I loved the time that I got to spend with Sean. Sean Michaels. Michaels. And it was challenging, bro. It was very difficult at times. But uh, you but talk about was, a hell of a hand. Oh, he my was God. Abso- bro, he was absolutely. When you put the whole package together in every aspect of wrestling, he was absolutely the best I worked with. I mean, he is as far as worker, uh, all the guy, all the boys I've interviewed over the years always have him at the top of just as far as being a hell of a hand, just a guy that fucking could work his ass off, could put over anybody. Yeah. But but a little bit, a little bit of a head case, a little bit yeah. of a little bit of a problem sometimes. But if you got if you got the right Shawn Michaels in the right yeah. headspace tear the fucking house down and print money. <clears throat> and I, wa- I, wa- I want to give an honorable mention, bro. And nobody, nobody talks about him. And I don't know why. And oh my God, bro, what a genius. So freaking great to work with. The greatest storyteller I ever worked with in my life. Not only work with Saw, the greatest storyteller. Uh, I don't know why he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Uh, bro, uh, William Moody, Paul Barra. Oh, oh my yeah. God. What what a genius. What a great character. What a great actor. What a great you know, It's a wonder. Why 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 did Paul Bearer, why why does he kind of get proverbially shit on when it you know like I you know when know. it comes to all the talking heads of wrestler, I don't all the, know. the different ways that wrestling's broke out now, you know, through podcasting and through different ways. Paul Bearer very rarely is mentioned in that rarefied air, and people don't know know that he just wasn't the guy that carried the urn, you know, for for, for Mark. He is just, he had such a brilliant mind. Brilliant. And and a lot of, and a lot of Mark's, a lot of Mark's, you know, radio, a lot of Mark's uh, wrestling uh, intellect came from Paul Bearer. Absolutely. I mean, you know, he, he was, oh yeah, it's. He and was, and rest in was, peace to him too, buddy. Oh, what a joy, man! What a joy, bro! I got a couple honorable men- mentions for um, Stone Cold. Yeah, well, you, bro, let me let me tell you about Stone Cold. And you, you know, again, bro, you will totally understand this. I loved working with Austin. Loved him. We we still got a good relationship. Never any heat. Never anything. But here's what happened with him, bro. Bro, he got over so huge. Oh. In such a short period of time, he he always had in the back of his mind that it could end just this quickly. So, so a little before, kind of little, kind of maybe a little macho man paranoia. Paranoia, <laughs> yeah, bro. Well, you got to par- put you got to put macho man in there because he's the most yeah. paranoid man in the world. And bro, you got to understand something. I totally understood it. I I I totally got it, and I understood it. And 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 I worked around it, but he he was very like looking at everything, you know, through a through a magnifying glass, Mike, because he was afraid right. he was gonna lose it just as quickly. Well, so I totally got it and understood. How about uh how about Callaway? Yeah, I mean, same same thing. Put, yeah, but, put but, him Mark, in the- but Mark never knew that it was going to go away because he ended up being like, you know, the guy that had the most longevity. And at the yeah. end of the day, man, it was always explained. And even Hogan would tell me, even though I got my own dressing room, bro, Taker runs it. Like, I mean, like, I, it was always kind of always explained to me that Taker ran the dressing room. Bro, here here's the one thing I will never forget about Taker because I cannot tell you how many times I witnessed this. I swear to God. You know, bro, a, as the writer, you know, especially the pay-per-views, you know, Taker main evented a lot of pay-per-views. Right. Uh, he was the last match on Raw a lot. As the writer, bro, I always make sure when the show is over, 
I am shaking everybody's hand and I am thanking them because without them, I don't have a job. Right. It, it, it's that. I don't care who it is on the card. So, bro, I can't tell you how many times I witnessed this where Baker's out there in the last match tearing the freaking house down, tearing it down. So now I go to the back because I want to thank him for his performance with everybody else. He's nowhere to be found. I would have to look for him. And, bro, where I would find him would be a locker room or a dressing room far, far away where the trainer was working on him and he was in excruciating pain. And I I remember seeing that and I was like, how in God's name did he just do that out there? And he didn't want anybody to know. He never sold it, bro. But I can't tell you how many times I witnessed that. I got to take her story for you at the Sun Dome here in Tampa to house show. And um, it's for, um, it's for I think it, I think it's for Vince. Because I think it was Pat Patterson. It was the him and Jerry Briscoe were the agents. And <clears throat> I was supposed to be a dark match. You know, it was just, I was an opening, you know, opening gimmick deal. And it was me and Briscoe. Briscoe was going to be like a special referee. And they had, remember the, um, who, they were, Sean, they were, um, they were, uh, fuck, uh, McMahon's son, um, Shane. Shane? Yeah, the. the oh, bro, yeah, bro, Rodney, Rodney posses. and Pete Gass. Yeah, the, the, was it the Broad, the, the Broad. Not, broad Street Posses? Broad, broad Street. Something like it that? It was, yeah, Broad Street Posses. Or, it, wasn't broad, it wasn't Broad Street, but it was something Posses. Yeah, yes. yeah, Brooklyn Posses or some bullshit. <laughs> Two yeah, dudes, yeah. you know, they were they were Shane's guys, and they were like opening match guys too. Yeah. But they, you know, they were, they were, they were WWF guys, you nonetheless. Yeah. And so, yeah. but here we are in my hometown, Tampa. The place is fucking sold out. I'd given them three or four weeks of free promotion. Uh, broad Street Bullies, I think they might have been, or something like that. And, uh. So uh, I'm in the back, and uh, Pat Patterson's laying out to finish. So he's and right. Jerry's there, and Patterson's like, "Okay, so here's what's gonna happen, Bubba. You're gonna go in there, <clears throat> you're gonna try to uh, do a scoop slam on one of the guys. They're gonna fucking tap you, distract you. They're gonna do a double clothesline on the deal. Uh, you're gonna try to get up, kick out one, two, three, uh, get back up. Another one clotheslines you again. This time they cover you. Jerry tries to get uh, interference, but he gets cut off with the other dude, and we and you and you do one clean one, two, three. So I'm like thinking, okay, whatever. I'm not a fucking wrestler. I'm just a fucking sideshow Willie here. Whatever. I'm glad. I mean, I'm just honored to be in a WWE ring. You know, fucking in, in front of Mean you. Street Posse. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mean Street Posse. <laughs> Yeah. And they had these little fucking sweaters on and shit, <laughs> and they're all happy because they're putting yeah. over the. Lo- I mean, they're gonna go. They're gonna bury the local DJ clean, you know. And uh, so that's the way it was. I'm not yeah. fucking bitching about it. I'm like, hey, listen, man, I'm gonna be able to get on the radio next day. So listen, I may have gotten beaten, but how many of you motherfuckers get a chance to work for WWE? I'm a pro wrestler. I'm the man. Whole fucking nine yards. Well, Callaway is Mark is in the red. He's he's listening to the finish because it was kind of in the dressing room there. Well, at that time, Mark lived in Tampa, and he knew how over I was in Tampa. So Mark goes, Pat, we're going to bury the guy that put 2,000 seats and 2,000 asses <laughs> in his own fucking hometown on a dark match. And Pat goes, what do you mean? Callaway goes, I've been listening to the radio for three weeks, and this guy's been selling the shit out of this place. Last time we came to the Sun Dome, we did 7,800. We got 9,200 in, in attendance right wow. now. And uh, you're going to fucking bury a guy in his own hometown with with, a, with an opening match. It's not even on TV. Pat, without missing a beat, goes, so listen, Bubba, here's what we're going to do. You're going to double <laughs> clothesline those two dudes. Jerry, you're going to come in and hot shot Bubba. Bubba, you go off the second. We'll do it one, two, three in the middle. It'll be four minutes. And I, and I to this. And I, and, 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 I, and I went to Mark. I said, I said, take her, man. Thank you so much. He goes, bro, it's about business. It's, yeah, it's, it's, man, he, says it's, it. he says it's he says it's he said it's 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 strictly business. He says it's not that yep. I like you any better than these guys. It's not that you're not. It's 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 about business, and we'll be yep. back doing business with you again in this town. And I and it, and I'll never forget that story. That's awesome, bro. And, and, and so bro, he, and so Mark got me over, man. He did, yeah. bro. That that's funny, man. That's that's the difference of when, a real a know, real a real guy who understands a business. Yeah, bro, that's the difference with when I really started in the business and the reason why I left. Because, bro, I dealt with businessmen. Right. They they were all they cared about was how how much money are we making? What what do we they were businessmen. 
I just saw that bro turn into literally kids who had a dream to become a wrestler and now the marks are in the ring and they would wrestle for free. And I saw that happen, bro, over my career. There is no more respect no. anymore. There's no more philosophy. No, 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 nothing, bro. I mean, there was, it was, it, you know what it was? And I, and I hope I don't make you mad. And I hope the people that listen to this and watch this, too, it's called Goldberg Itis. Is what it's called, and you know, like it, it, it. Nobody wins a hundred and fucking fifteen matches in a row. They fucking. It's called Goldberg Otis. You right now, man. Go to Ric Flair. Ric Flair will do it in his heyday. Would do a job if it made sense. Go to Kevin right. Nash. Kevin Nash yep. will lay down clean if it makes sense. You know, go to Kane. Go to Stone Cold. You know, go to you know, go to Taker. Go to even Terry back when t- before Terry became fucking before Terry got Bischoff out. Every, uh, go to Shawn Michaels, you know, go, go to all these real, real workers that will, they'll lay down and do one fucking absolutely clean in the middle if it makes sense and it's best for business. Absolutely, then you start, then you man. get fucking Goldberg in there and it all went to shit. Yeah. Not that you're going to, not that you have an opinion on that, but that's my opinion. Oh no, bro. He was probably, I, I, you know, listen, I'm not going to make, I, I, I've said this, bro. He was the most difficult person I ever had to work with. I got to tell you, man, you're working that mic like fucking Howard Stern. Look at you, buddy. Hey, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, look, look, you see the closer works. you get. My God. <laughs> oh, he is difficult to work with. And I don't uh, think, and I don't think within hard. the industry very well liked either. I don't think it's so. Just very, very, very hard to work with, man. Hey, Vince, man, this has been so great, man. This really has. I, honest to God, I really enjoy I, I, I don't go this long with anybody. Fuck. Yeah, this was awesome. And, bro, I can't tell you how many times, Bubba, you'll, you'll get a kick out of this. You know, th- things have kind of cooled down a little bit with, with me and Bischoff because I think he realized he kept cutting all these promos on me and everything, and I never I never said a word. Bro, I can't tell you when he was cutting all these promos on me. He started cutting promos on me, and I'm ignoring him right now. But I cannot tell you how many times I said publicly, bro, let's do a one-on-one just like this. Right. If you have something you want to say, say it to me. Let's have a conversation, and hopefully that conversation will be civil, and we can, you know, we can end cordially. Bro, flat out refused to ever have a conversation no, with me. No, the answer is that, hard. No. Yeah that that I don't that I don't understand. I don't that, think any. I don't, I don't think any wrestler that's ever had a problem with you or whatever the controversial. You, you've really not been that uh, part of that many controversy. The, the the bash of the beach was probably your biggest controversy. And, yeah. and, you know, Eric, Eric takes swipes at you all the time. He takes swipes at me and he, but there's nobody, I don't think, because you are very honest and you, and you, and you're that standard New Yorker. Let me, uh, and, 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 and even, even with you, you know, talking about how, Hey bro, I fucked up on the Terry deal. I, as a yeah. man yep. told him I'd call him and I didn't, that's my, that's on me. And, yes. and like I said, I was ready not to battle you, but I have been, you know, hard sold drinking the Hogan Kool-Aid that it went down this way. And and I I really think most of the wrestling business, I, I think that this interview might be very iconic and a lot of that it really shed some light from two people that were on opposite sides of this of this that were told two different things and the truth, the actual truth was actually discovered today and the reason why that happened. A lot of people may have known the truth that it was indeed a work and Hogan was lying about it, but they didn't know that it was really uh, 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 it, it was really a Turner shove down at the end of the day. It was that's, Bubba, that's where want, it was from. You want to hear some interesting, bro. This is the God honest truth about me coming into this. In, okay. Bro, I really did not know where you were with Hulk. I mean, I knew there was a huge falling out and everything that happened. But, you know, today, I did not know where, where you were with Hulk. So in the back of my mind... You thought I, I was I'm, trying to get I, you? <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, I'm preparing myself, and I'm like, you know what, bro? I don't know where he is with Hulk. He might bring Hulk on the show. No. And, bro, I, I got, but, Bub, I got to be honest with you. <laughs> 
I'm a hundred percent fine with that. Yeah, no, I'm, that would even hold on. Fine, that would even bro. that would even have been better because right. I mean that would have been better because I would have been like Hootie, what the fuck? Right. This guy's got right. some pretty good fucking shit here, buddy. Why don't you just man up right now and let's just let's just bring it out yeah. clean. Let's bring it I out clean. I got no problem. I have no, absolutely no problem with it, bro. You know, I I have reached out to Hulk and he's told me to fucking basically pack sand. He made his money off of me. I did a job. I did the ultimate job. I did the ultimate fucking job. I, you know, I, he will not have anything to do with me. He hates my guts, you know, and um, it's, it's sad because we were very close. Yeah, but that, I, it, that really is unfortunate, bro. And, it really is. And I was warned. I was warned, you know, by a lot of the workers. Uh, uh, th th listen, bro, he's, he's one way. He's going to fucking use you. And I was like, how the fuck is he going to use me? Like, you know, and then the sex tape happened and, you know. I I told I I said the things I needed to say for him to be able to for the outcome to have happened, and I mean, I, just within the business, we'll call it. I did a job, and uh, I mean, I did I did a job, and that's all I can really say without perjuring myself. But I did a job, and he got fucking paid, and we could still be friends, but he won't be my friend because then it looks like a work. It looks like a work, and it wasn't a work. Like, it was not a work. He did fuck my wife. I did give him permission. The tape got stopped. Nobody in the world was supposed to know about that. I, it makes me look absolutely fucking stupid. Like, that tape does nothing for me. I mean, it does not, it does not make me look like a very good person at all. There were three consenting adults that did that. It was never supposed to be know, known by anybody. Look at the havoc that it wreaked. But yeah. he's afraid that if he acknowledges me or we're friends again, then it looks workish and it and it and it hurts his legacy. And that's bullshit because, you know, at the end of the day, we all participated in that. And you're the only one him. He's the only one that came out on the right side of it. Uh, I'm the one that looks like I mean, I lost my job. Uh, I lost every I lost everything because of that. But it's my own fault. I'll, you know, like just like you took a certain amount of responsibility, I take, I allowed that to happen, and my home surveillance captivated. So I have to, much like you, Vince, when you say I got to take a certain amount of responsibility as a man. I don't have clean hands in this, but I certainly got fucking, I certainly got it shoved up my ass, nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. But you know, I think all the boys probably fucking hate me because of it. You know, because they know Hogan's side of the story. Because the media. And for the most part, don't know that this was, you know, uh, an employee that stole this tape and shopped it to Hollywood. And Gawker were the only ones that were interested in buying it because it was a privacy issue. And, you know, it was just it's just it's a, it's an absolute it, it, to the, it will it will ruin my legacy. But what kind of fucking legacy do I got? I'm a stupid radio guy, whatever. <laughs> and I, I <laughs> no, taught and not. I taught Vince Russo. Look, I mean, look how close that mic is, motherfucker. Yeah, I got baby. you working Hello. that mic, bitch. WKRP. Yes. <laughs> you, no, you're no, 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 no. It was God. What K, you worked for one year at a station in New York. Oh I remember. Yes. D uh, w G. Oh, fuck. I forget. What w G B B was Long Island before I went to the one in the city. The one on the city was 50,000 watts. Yeah. But, oh, but, but do you know, do you know, this is the God honest truth, bro. I wasn't the guy that had a dream to be in the wrestling business. None of that. I was a fan of the wrestling business. I needed a job. I wrote a letter to Linda McMahon. I know. Bro, Can you, you believe know? that? You wrote a letter yeah. to Linda. Bro, do you know what my dream job always was to this day? To this day. To be a radio bro, guy. I want, I want to be a radio guy. Yeah. I swear to God, to this day, I, I would take a local gig here in Colorado. You should. I can't get one. <laughs> well, why? Why can't you? I don't know. I, I, that, I've i always, that's what that Listen, my I got, I got, I got, I got to tell you, man, the industry right now is really gravitating to sports talk because it's, it's, it's easy to run. Uh, it's 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 user friendly advertising wise. I know you know a shit ton about sports, and what you don't know about sports, you're a, you could quickly you know get up to. It, let's say you don't know anything about NBA basketball. Well, you could watch enough NBA basketball and have an opinion about it. You right. should get with, you know, uh, you should get with a local sports station and say, hey, listen, can I start doing a, a two hour weekend show? I'll, I'll do it for free, just just to get my feet wet. And start that. It's not much any different than what you're doing podcasting. Just formatically, yeah. it's a little bit different.
Right, right. You know, and and it, but it would also give you another avenue to promote your brand. You know, as yeah. well. But yeah, I always I I love it. I love I got in radio and I loved it, and that's what I always wanted to do, man. What kind of setup do you got going there at the at the little studio there? I got a little roadcaster where I could play uh, play some. As a matter of fact, would you like to hear? Uh, some words of wisdom from the great Dave Meltzer. Can I share yeah, that with you? Yeah, from the great Dave Meltzer. Here from, this is from the great Dave Meltzer. Here we go. I don't anticipate ever seeing giving another match seven stars, but if I do, then it'll be a wonderful thing for wrestling. Yeah, if Dave Meltzer gives a match a seven stars, it'll be a wonderful thing for us. Now, now, what has he ever seven starred a match? Oh yeah, he, I I, th- I think he's crossed that barrier now. Yes. Now, now you now Melter's cool with you, but Bischoff. No, hey, no, no, Melter's not cool no. with you. I'm I'm not cool with any dirt sheet. Cornet. No, no, no. Uh, Heyman. I, him, him, and I never really crossed paths. We never. Really Who are you paths. close with? Oh my God, bro! I got so many wrestlers. I mean, I know on Kurt. My, you and Kurt are close. I got a lot of wrestlers on my podcast, bro. I mean, that I still, you know. Stevie, how about Mick? Like you, said, how about you and Mick? Oh yeah, me and Mick are cool. Me I love Mick. Mick. Cool. Yeah, I love Mick. Well, we're Long Island boys, bro. Yeah. We, we we went to opposing high schools. When's the last time you talked to Nasher? Uh, well, Big bro, sexy. you know. I, yeah, obviously, bro. With the um, you know, with what happened with his son, that tragedy. Yeah. We 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 still um. Did you reach out still, though? Did you reach out? Oh, after? absolutely. Okay. No, we we still direct message to this day, bro. Good. To this day. Yeah, he I is, love, love he, Kevin, You know man. what? He is like he is just a fucking man's man. Yes, he really he is. is, man. Yes, he is. I remember man. the first time I met him for the first time. I never thought he'd be that fucking big. I'd be like, oh my. Because I was hanging out with Hogan. I thought Hogan was about as big as it gets, right? Well, then I meet Big Show. Like, holy shit. But then Nash is... No, I don't know if Nash is as big as Big Show, but Nash is bigger in a different way than Big Show. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Na- yeah. Uh, and and Nash, I just... Fu- and Kurt, I've always been close oh, to Kurt. Kurt's the best, man. Kurt's the best. And and I always and I always have Kurt tell the story of when uh, him and Lesnar... Uh, shot style in the ring. Lesnar was talking all this shit. Did you ever heard that story? Didn't you? No, I have not. No, <clears throat> yeah, you no. know, Lesnar was an NCAA champion and huge, bigger than Kurt. And Kurt was an Olympic champion. And so the ongoing feud was, you know, shoot style. Who would win? And Lesnar would always say, "Oh, I'm fucking too big." You know, this, this, this. Well, they happen to be in. You know, the boys like sometimes at three, three thirty, will go out in the ring and kind of walk through their matches and shit. Well. Brock would always go and make sure Kurt wasn't in the building yet to walk through his match because he never wanted to get caught in the ring with Kurt in the building, you know, because Kurt could go down there and say, all right, motherfucker, let's just roll around a little bit, shoot style. Right. So <laughs> one time I think Jerry Briscoe or somebody called Kurt in his hotel room and said, hey, fucking Brock's down here doing a walkthrough with whatever the fuck. Because Brock was pretty green at the time, so he'd still do little walkthroughs and shit. Yeah. And so Kurt got his rental car, wrote, fucking ran on as fast as he did. And all the boys were watching from the dressing room, and Kurt went in there, and and I've had Kurt on the air several times, and he said like, "Listen, it wasn't it wasn't easy, but I I won." He said, "I I yeah. was I was I I I t- I take him down, then I'd let him back up, then I'd take him down, I'd let him back up, I take him down, I'd let him back up." He goes, "You know, I would win on points, and I did win." But he's a handful. But it fucking yeah. really put Lesnar in his place. So Lesnar, you know, Lesnar could never ever really yeah. fuck with Kurt, you know, after bro, that. Bro, I gotta tell you something that I witnessed and I never forgot. I swear to God, bro, you you know how like you think you saw something and, and you, you years later you start questioning, well, I I I finally got the person to confirm this a couple of years ago. Bro, this was the greatest thing I ever saw. Because you bring up the big show. Right. Bro, we were in catering, and freaking show is needling, needling, needling Ken Shamrock. Oh, shit. Bro, Ken says as as politely as he can, bro, if you keep pushing me, I am going to take you on the ground in three seconds, and you are going to be in tears. In front of all the boys. As calm as a <laughs> cucumber, bro. Bro, you, you know how big show is. Oh, yeah. Bro, show had to get one more in. And I am telling you, Bubba, literally in three seconds, 
he had showdown in catering literally begging for his mother really and that's when i realized oh shamrock will kill you bro those he will shoot kill you. those shoot motherfuckers you know yes. like you know oh, who's yeah. a badass nowadays people matt riddle people don't realize that oh, shoot yeah, style yeah, fucking yeah. riddle yep, yep i wish we would see some of that in his character but yeah, they don't me go too. There. yeah i don't know why they don't go there like why he's I not stretching know, guys more you know yeah. did you yeah. witness the uh the infamous uh jericho uh Double chicken wings, Goldberg. Did you are or, or that infamous? You, oh or, yeah, I wasn't around for that. I w- I wasn't there. For supposedly, that. fucking Goldberg. Ba- I mean, supposedly, little Jericho backed him right to fuck down. Supposedly. Yeah. Yeah. Did you and Jericho ever get along? Oh yeah, we still do. I, as a matter of fact, I actually write a column for his website. Web is Jericho. I write a, a weekly column for him. Man, he has done so fucking well. He is oh, so talented. Yeah. And you know what? Absolutely. Talk about another g- hell of a hand. That motherfucker could work his ass off. I remember watching him and Flair work one time in Gainesville. Oh, my God. Just unbelievable. Yeah, Yeah, I was on the phone with him, bro, when he was under contract with WCW because it was legal to talk to a talent from another company as long as you talked about after their contract expired. Yeah, and Bischoff was burying him, job him the fuck out. Yeah, Remember that? Nah, and, bro, I, I was on the phone with him uh, before his contract expired, and that's that's when we brought him in. That's when you in. guys brought him in, and completely, that's, I mean, WCW fucking completely misused him. You know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That's when you went with the Y2J shit and put yes, him way yeah. over. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Vince, yeah. listen, listen to that interview because it, it, it'll it give you a different perspective. Basically, since we broke it down today, I also yeah. give you permission, man, if you want to use it in any way, shape or form, you know, talk on your show, whatever. Thanks. Man. Uh, okay, and, cool. And, and cool. more importantly, man, every I don't know, every couple months, let's just shoot. The, let's let's fucking phone yeah, each other man, up and I shoot love, the shit. I love, bro, you, I've, I've always been a fan of yours. I mean, I, I say that all the time. I, I even was doing one of my podcasts and. You know, bro, there was a time I know, like you, you didn't know me from Adam, but when, when, when Hulk started burying me, I mean, both oh, of I you buried guys. the shit out of you because <laughs> no, I was, because yeah. I, I was in doctor. I mean, I was told, I was, the, course, I was like, man, that piece of shit. Let me tell you, he, Bubba, when we'd be driving over to TNA, he goes, that fucking Russo is <laughs> going to write you out of the show tonight. I just know I'm going to have to fuck with him. <laughs> and bro, that, that's the thing. Like, bro, it used to bother me. <laughs> A little i'll tell you why you used to bother me a little because i'm like bro this guy doesn't know me from a hole in the wall but, but i hated bro, you when, when i met you i genuinely liked you and it was right in a away. hotel room with like it was me yes. bischoff you yes. i think maybe yes. dixie and 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 it was it, you were I, I i can i actually got in trouble with hogan because we were driving back from that meeting it was in a hotel room uh yes. on on universal property and I remember I was in the back seat. It was Hogan in the passenger seat, and Bischoff was driving. And I go, that guy didn't seem like such a dick to me. <laughs> and, and Hogan goes, easy, brother, easy, because he yeah, knew Bischoff nah. would be mad at me. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I liked you the first day we met. And like I said, as a writer, when you have a talent that's good, that's a plus, man. You know, you're just going to make the show better. Anyway, listen, kid. Uh my good friend, I don't know if you know this, but my good friend, one of my good, one of my best friends is Deion Sanders. And you know right now he's the oh, most, yeah. o- he's the most over motherfucker in Boulder. I mean. No doubt. He is, no go- doubt. He is I, I, God. I go, I go to, yeah, I go to games every year, bro. I love going to Folsom Field and I'll definitely, I'm definitely going to be going. Hey, I'll year. get you an, I'll get you an introduction. Oh, that would be awesome, I'll get bro. you an introduction, bro. He's my he's a really good friend of mine. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, bro. I go every season, man. I go up there. And that you, did you hear did you hear that season tickets are now sold out? Oh my god. And and the team has been awful for God knows how oh, many. Oh, they were years. one and eleven last year. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Man. What made that's you awesome. what made you to pick Colorado when you got out of the business? Like what made what made you of nah, all places? Bro, when when, when I was twenty two. I had to come here for a business meeting and I wound up in Boulder at 22 and bro, something just came over me. Like, this is where you're supposed to be. And, you know, and and I got tired of talking about it. So about like 14 years ago, whatever I came. Is the cost of living pretty, is it pretty good? I mean, is it, you know, I mean, I'm, you're coming from you know, Long Island, New York where it's yeah, the high, but yeah, I mean, is cost I, of yeah. living comp, you know, decent. 
it, 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 I mean, it, it's on the higher side, bro, but I, th- there's no place else I'd want to live. I love it here in Colorado. Right. Hey, Vince, man. I love you, buddy. I am so I think we I think we really did an interview today that the industry really a lot of people are going to take a notice to because, yeah. you know, it was it, it was both ends of the spectrum. Both guys laid it all out. And we know I I know the truth now. And the truth is what you've been spewing for. I mean, yep. and, and if you put the pieces of the puzzle together in conjunction with what corporate TNA what TNT did. It it validate along with the two uh, un, you know unsuccessful lawsuits. It validates you know what what you said. And quite frankly, as stupid as I thought your actions were, they were the the only way to fucking save face and to make that angle work for real, that, bro. That's all it was, bro. It was just the wrestling. People angle. fuck with you saying that was dumb and disrespect. It was the only way that you were able gonna to be able to come back with Hogan on TV. It was a wrestling angle, bro. That's all it was. God, it was even bigger than a Montreal screw job. Now that I know the truth. <laughs> now that yeah. I fucking know the truth, bro. Hey, Vince, let's keep in touch, my friend, okay? Yeah, man. Thank you so much for having man, me, bro. It no, was, thank it was you. Great, man. Thank you, buddy. Good seeing you, bud. And and listen, uh, uh, uh I'm gonna get your cell phone or whatever from from my from my producer and let's keep in touch, okay, bud? Definitely, man. Thank you so much, bro. And, Thank I, you. and I emailed him the clip too. Just so oh yeah, knows. yeah, yeah. Hey, Vince, Thanks, listen Vince, to bro. listen to that, and then get back to me privately, okay, bud? I will definitely do that, man. Right, Thank man. you so much. Let me just tell everybody too one more time because I know you got a great Russo audience. brand. Russo's Ru- brand, yeah. Russo's brand dot com. Now is it, it Russo's plural or Russo singular? Russo's with an S. Russo's brand dot com. Russo's brand dot com. And I will yes. continue to promote that uh, and, and a- you, anytime man. I can. And you know what? Let's do this more often. OK, bud. Absolutely, man. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. OK, bye, bye buddy. Thanks, man. I fucking love that guy. <clears throat> Great job. Great interview. Oh, God. What a long one, huh? Yeah. And I can't read anything of what chat. Uh, I can't read anything that chat's saying. Or if they're liking it, I don't know how many people are on. Can you give me those stats? Oh uh, well, when we started wrapping it up, it got a little below four hundred, but we were doing good. A lot, of, a lot of people were loving it. A lot of great. Did they take stories. a shit on it? Or no, not at all. A lot of good clips to pull. Oh God, that's for days. You and um, Rhett probably are fucking cringing. I think Gary the Control, who's the biggest wrestling mark there is, has been jerking off the whole time. Has he really? Oh yeah, Gary the Control. Gary the Control. What a good dude. Yeah. And after you lay it all out, man, Hogan fucking lied. I mean, Hogan fucking lied. It was it was a work. It was absolutely a fucking work. Yeah. What a long day, huh? Well, the Joe said that he, it's better than having sex. God, that was some great inside. It was. Fuck. Holy Oak Joe, do you think I can't watch I can't see anything, but do you think that the do you think a lot of wrestling pages will pay I mean, do you think that that's gonna be I mean, do you think that you think I think a lot of people are going to pick that up? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Just let me, let me tell you something, even the Bischoff dinner story. Um, you know what? I'm so sorry I fucked your sports show up, buddy. Are you guys going on or not? Yeah, we may go on for a quick bit. There's All some right. people here who want to stop. See it? I'm so sorry. Oh, but, I mean, I, I was just on a fucking interview. roll, bud. Hey, listen, when you got Russo on and you're flowing, go for it. All right, bud. Thank you. Thank you, Bubba.